morning. This is the August 29th meeting of the Board of Directors of the Golden Rain Foundation of Walnut Creek. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the internet. If you do not wish to be recorded, you can sit in one of the last three rows. Um, roll call, please. Kelso? Here. Birdsong? Here. Coonan? Here. Neff? Here. Adams? Here. Anderson? Here. Brown? Here. Harrington? Here. Stumpho? Here. O'Keefe? Here. Thank you. Um, I want to also remind people this is the second month in the trial of our new format for the residence forum. So we have a normal residence forum at, in the normal time slot on the agenda. If you'd like to speak about anything on the agenda uh, and want to leave or multiple topics or something not on the agenda, that's the time to speak. Then there will be an opportunity for you to speak uh, during a residence forum before each uh, we, before the board takes a vote on each item. So if there's anyone out there that would like to change their form or, or add something or fill out a form, go ahead and do it now. Uh, you have all seen the minutes. Uh, any corrections or changes to the minutes? Okay, they're approved as written. I um, would like to make a statement about our last meeting. I'd like to apologize for some confusion caused during our last board meeting by a statement made by a board member concerning the Chinese American Club. That statement represented the personal opinion of that board member and in no way reflected the GRF Club policy. GRF acknowledges the significant contributions made by the Chinese American Club to the Rossmore community. GRF cannot and will not impose restrictions on Rossmore clubs other than requiring a minimum of 20 members a requirement that no more than 20% of the members be non-Rossmore residents, that they pay for insurance, and that the club president be a Rossmore resident. Now we're ready for the update from Kevin for Walnut Creek. Good morning, board. Uh, we only have one meeting at City Council this month. We're on hiatus for these last couple of weeks, but we had an action-packed uh, meeting at our first meeting. First, we had a um, presentation by the Contra Costa Transit Authority for their expenditure plan for 2020. Some of the improvements they talked about included the 680 improvements, which will have the HOV lane completed within the next uh, year to two years right at the 24 680 interchange as you go south. And of course, we're seeing a lot of that impact right now within the streets of Walnut Creek. Uh, Part of their future plans will also include closing the HOV gap on 680 to 4 as you go northbound and southbound, and that will also be addressing the bottleneck that occurs on 680 and 24 that we're currently seeing now. Anybody that comes in the afternoon um, north on 680 is seeing that bottleneck well going all the way back. Uh, in addition, the future is going to focus on improving air quality and connecting various transit agencies and relieving some of the congestion on the roads. So one of the things they talked about was the fact that Caltrain comes into Martinez and there's really no smooth connection from there to BART. So this is a long range plan that they, that they plan on addressing and certainly that's going to help for a lot of the congestion and people that are commuting on the road for two to three hours coming from uh, Solano County and close to Sacramento. We also approved uh, some of the finalization of the North Downtown specific plan. So you're gonna be familiar with North Downtown because that's where the Lesher Center is. And in fact, we've created an arts district that's going to be right around the center of the, where the Lesher Center is up into where the Target parking lot is. And the, the specific plans are long range vision plans. So we're talking 15, 20, 25 years. And the idea is that as different developers are looking to have their developments move into the area, we've set out specific zoning areas for them. So we've got the Arts District. There's going to be a Maker's Row. Uh, that's going to be around the Parkside area. That's going to be kind of an arts and crafts area where smaller merchants can display their goods. And then the area on Giamona, and that's where Skibellini's is on that little side street of Giamona. It's near the downtown farmer's market, if you've ever gone there on Sundays. We're looking at eventually making that into a Giamona Plaza where it's uh, a pedestrian plaza. So the street would, uh, would be closed, again, we're talking 
many years down the road here, but the street would be closed, be available for a pedestrian mall in that area of town. The idea is that this is going to really open up downtown Walnut Creek, where a lot of the focus now has been in the Broadway Plaza area and the core downtown. This is intended to open up that downtown uh, to Target and, uh, and even a little beyond there. You may have seen in the city manager's update uh, a couple of weeks ago, but with in connection with Walnut Creek downtown uh, and the public art, we're going to be introducing painted pianos downtown. There's going to be about eight to ten decorated pianos. They're very cool looking. And they're going to be all spread throughout the downtown area that people can play. So you're going to be hearing different residents, visitors, uh, playing just different pieces. It's up to them. This will be out there for a couple of months through the end of October. And the, we recently broke ground on Main Street near Cypress. If anybody knows where the pomegranate restaurant is, uh, there's also a Godiva chocolates that's right around there, or Belgian chocolates. There's going to be uh, similar to a parklet. It's almost an, a little urban park area that is going to straight uh, it's going to extend the sidewalk out. There's going to be an area for work for adults, kids, and little play structures, tables. People can eat there on, uh, on nice days. There's also free Wi-Fi downtown, and so people can work while they're eating in that area. So this will be completed within the next six weeks or so. You're going to start seeing more of these kind of things, not just in Walnut Creek, but all around the area, where we're able to put in more recreational facilities in downtown areas that have typically just been urban only in the past. And lastly, I'm not going to be here next month because I'm going to be joining uh, two former mayors, or our, actually our current mayor, Cindy Silva, she was also former mayor as well, as well as Kathy Hicks to our sister cities. Uh, we are going to Sciofic in Hungary and then Necetto in Italy. It's an official city visit, visiting and uh, for a cultural exchange. That'll be happening in the second half of September. And I'll report on how that went when I come back in October. And that's my update. Thank you. Questions? Carl. And then Sue. Yes, that the intersection between Olympic and 680 seems to be getting worse to the point that it's even backing up southbound traffic trying to get off of 680. Uh, when is that problem going to be addressed? Well, as the uh, CCTA had told us, it's going to get worse before it gets better, just like with any construction. We expect it will be completed within the next couple of years, and that construction is going to create some congestion. We understood that that was going to be happening. So there's a pain point here, just again, mm -hmm. like with any construction process. Once that's completed within 18 to 24 months, hopefully it'll be smooth sailing. I'm sure you'll let me know if it's not. Yeah, I, I was talking about the fact that the traffic a good deal of traffic is exiting and re-entering the freeway to bypass the congestion. Yep. And it was my understanding that, that Caltrans was going to allow the city of Walnut Creek to make that exit a true exit so that you would have to turn either left or right onto city streets and avoid the congestion on the on-ramp uh, from Olympic to uh, 680 northbound, which is seriously congesting all the streets all the way back up to Alpine. So is what's happening, people are exiting the freeway and then going right back onto it? Yes. Okay, so they're using... Okay. what that does is it blocks the exit so that local traffic sure. can't get on the freeway and that backs up way past you know, that backs up for s the traffic for several blocks in either direction and causes tremendous uh, city co street congestion. Uh, let me check with our transportation department and find out what's happening with that. Okay. And I'll report back. Sue? It, mine's just kind of, I well, getting dressed this morning, I heard TV say something about uh, Bart had just gotten a big windfall of several million dollars. Was this part of what you were talking about uh, to connect between the train and the BART? Uh, I saw something on BART this morning. This doesn't have anything to do with what I was talking about, but what uh, oh. BART did receive some funds, and of course there was uh, the gas tax 
that went into effect about a year and a half ago, and that's actually helped all transit in California. They talked about extending BART into San Jose, and I think that's what was primarily on the news this morning. They also talked about uh, getting additional police officers for additional safety on BART, and so all of this goes towards that. This is not from the same pool, though, that we're talking about. That's okay. Other questions? Tim? Kevin, the, uh, there's a lot of concern about PG&E's um, uh, stated intention to turn the power off, the, the PSPS, the, the um, what is that called, the public safety power shutoff. Mm -hmm. um, can you describe or do you know what the city's plans are in the event of a shutoff? Are there, um, are you going to do anything around cooling centers for residents of the community? or? The, what I've heard about this is that we are supposed to receive uh, enough notice that we can let the residents know and then put it, a potential plan into place should that happen. Uh, if a cooling center is needed, we'll be coming up with some of those emergency measures as we have in the past. Uh, at this point, we, we don't foresee any shutting off on Walnut Creek, but again, we haven't heard anything and we're hoping to get plenty of notice. Of course, PG&E hasn't given us confidence that that's uh, been the way they've operated in the past. Other questions? I have a couple questions. So the, the connection between Martinez train station and downtown Walnut Creek, is that something that's many years in the future? Or is that something that's... Yeah. Well, so the Martinez train station, so that connection is to connect to transit agencies. Right. So however it gets to downtown Walnut Creek, whether it's through some kind of a... Uh, um, a shuttle that goes to BART directly from there or some other ways. We're, we are talking many years in the future. This is all part of their 10 to 15 year future looking update. Uh, there's a lot. This was just the ones that we're focusing on our area. But we all recognize that so, to be as effective as we can in local transit and public transit, we have to make sure that the transit agencies connect to each other. And right now, that's one area of pain. There's many other pain points in the Bay Area where just there is no connection from one to another. Yeah, I've, I've had that problem multiple times, so I hope you work on that. Mm -hmm. um, also, this improvement on 680, is that, I know you're gonna extend the carpool lane. Are you adding any lanes or you're just taking an existing lane and turning, I mean, not you, but Caltrans, turning it into a carpool lane? The, the lanes um, that'll be extending will look to create a dish, an additional uh, HOV lane. Of course, in many areas, it goes right into the HOV lane now, and so that's where the shoulder work is coming in, too. There's also, and I should actually mention this, there's other discussions about having a, uh, a dedicated shoulder space for uh, public buses to go through, and so we're seeing that in other states. That hasn't been approved in California yet, but shoulder access is something that we are hearing more and more about from the transit agencies, and that would really help congestion as well. Um, so. There's widening, there's extending, it, it all goes into place. Okay, and then the uh, public Wi-Fi in downtown, what is the SSID for that so we don't connect to some nefarious person out there trying to set up It's a... called Walnut Creek Public Wi-Fi. Okay. That, yeah, so it's... We see, we'll see that on our phone. Yes, and, and then I the should last... mention, by the way, that that connects from Civic uh, down Locust Main Street, uh, it includes Broadway down to Broadway Plaza. At, at Mount Diablo Boulevard, Broadway Plaza's public Wi-Fi takes over. Okay. And I must have missed I haven't seen the invitation yet for this sister city tour. I, I assume that's coming here for the <laughs> president of the board. For <laughs> Thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> no answer required. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Sure. Oh, oh Carl, sorry. Yes, my understanding is that Caltrain was going to originally tie into BART at Antioch. Isn't that going uh, the current planned connection between Caltrain and other public transport? Port? Um, I don't know about Antioch. Again, this is from the the CCTA. So uh, the the idea is that they will be connecting to public transit in some way. We were told it was fairly ambiguous during their presentation that they are going to make sure to improve the connections between transit agencies. So they weren't that specific, whether it was Antioch, which to me seems like that's, it would make more sense to do it in North Concord or Concord. That's the closest access point. But again, this is going to be up to them. Yeah, that's my understanding why they put that extension of BART so close to Caltrain and that essentially the tracks are almost on the other side of the parking lot. Yeah. 
I, I'm not sure, but uh, I have a meeting with the Transit Authority next month, and I'll find out more. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mary, the Treasurer's Report, please. Good morning, everyone. Before I get started on the monthly financials, I want to make an announcement about the upcoming budget meeting. So this budget meeting that's scheduled for September is a we review a draft of the 2020 GRF operating budget. And when that finally gets approved at the end of September, we'll all know what the amount of our coupon will be for the operating budget. So the good news is the meeting was scheduled over a two-day period. It's a joint meeting with the Finance Committee and the GRF Board. We've changed it to a one-day meeting. So it's going to be Tuesday, September 10th, starting at 9 in the morning, and it'll be in the fireside room. And the actual draft budget will be available on rossmore.com on Wednesday, September 4th. So that's next Wednesday. So I hope to see all of you there. And if you can't make the meeting, it'll be televised. And now let's move on to the uh, monthly financial reports. And as always, I'll start with the operating budget results and then move on to the GRF Trust Estate Fund. For the month of July, the GRF operating budget had a $21,000 deficit. Total revenues were over budget by $10,000, and total expenses were over budget by $31,000. The month's revenue and expense variances are detailed in item five of today's board package, and they're also listed in yesterday's uh, Rossmore News. The cumulative for the first seven months of this year, the operating budget has a $27,000 surplus. Revenues are under budget by $139,000, and expenses are below budget by $166,000. And now moving to the trust estate fund. There were 37 membership transfer fees collected in July that generated $370,000. That compares to 40 fees collected in July 2018, which generated $360,000. So in spite of collecting three fewer transfer fees in July 2019, the total revenue collected was more. And that's because starting July 1st, the transfer fee increased from $9,000 to $10,000. Cumulative for the first seven months of this year, 271 fees have been collected. That is 25 fewer fees than collected for the same period last year and $188,000 less revenue into the trust estate fund. And we're hopeful that by the end of the year, um, our membership transfer fee collection will increase and at least match last year. The total trust Fund expenditures in July were $425,000. There were six major expenses, and they included $10,000 for water reclamation facility study, $19,000 for the Dollar Clubhouse accessibility improvements, $26,000 for gateway workshop renovation design, $45,000 for the fiber optic cable phase one project, $146,000 for machinery and equipment, and lastly, $178,000 for debt service on the three GRF loans. And the month-end cash balance in the fund is $3,712,000. Any questions? Thank you, Mary. Now the CEO's report, Tim. Good morning, board members, residents, and staff. Uh, first item is uh, about the Redwood Room Cafe. And finally, it's open. Um, just to give a little background as to how this has all evolved. Um, last year, we, when the previous operator had noticed us that they were no longer going to operate their uh, cafe there, we conducted a survey of the community, um, had, had a lot of responses, and uh, there was a lot of interest in having a cafe operator serving breakfast type items as well as lunch type items. Um, the survey also asked questions about whether residents would be willing to pay for a high quality coffee when at the time coffee had been provided for free. Um, and I, the criticisms were that it wasn't a high quality coffee. So, um, so we went out and this was not something where p restaurant operators were banging down our door to get a cafe opened. Um, it's not a high volume. There's not a lot of activity. Uh, there's not a lot of margin. 
Um, so there wasn't a lot of interest in uh, restaurant operators be willing to open up a cafe there. So we did, but we did find one. And we, so far, we've been really pleased. They've been open now about two weeks, kind of quietly opening. We put it in the newspaper. Um, there will be a grand opening uh, scheduled for uh, September 19th from 10 to noon. But between now and then, we would like to encourage everybody to come and support it. Come and check it out. The prices are very, very reasonable. Um, there are breakfast-type items, like a breakfast sandwich, um, muffins, coffee, pastries, donuts, bagels. For lunch, there's sandwiches and there's some salads and there are weekly specials. And if it does well, they will expand the menu. Um, and it, it's, right now they're closing at one o'clock each day, and it's only on weekdays, Monday through Friday. Um, but uh, it, you know, we want them to do well, and I uh, hope that the community comes out and supports them, because if, if they don't, the room will go back to just being a room without a cafe, which I think um, right now, I walk through that room every day um, my way into the office, and. It's been pretty neat to see people, there's a lot of buzz and activity in the room right when they open at eight o'clock, so every single day. So if you haven't been to the room in a while, come and visit, um, check it out, and certainly come on the open house, uh, the grand opening that they'll have on the 19th. The next item is, oh, and I, I should say also that the recreation staff has, um, has been evaluating the furniture in the rest of the room. So the cafe is over on the, uh, north side of the room, but there, there's kind of that bar type counter. The other side of the room, which is where the fireplace and the piano are, the, the furniture is about 20 years old. It was reupholstered a few years ago, um, but even now that's looking a bit tired. So we're, uh, the rec department is exploring, um, you know, how we could improve that space and make it, bring it a little more up to date, for example. Um, every, a lot of people come and bring laptops and, and they work down there. They use the Wi-Fi, the public Wi-Fi, and they, they do whatever they're doing uh, on their computers. So probably what we need is some additional power and some charging stations for people to charge up their cell phones and laptops and the like and that kind of thing. And we don't, the room is not currently set up to accommodate that very well. So um, we'll, we're looking at those. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for the Redwood Room. The, um, the next item is the solar farm. So we've been talking about this now for, I think, about five years. Uh, it was three years ago that I signed, almost three years ago that I signed the contract. Um, it's just taken a very, very long time for the solar farm to get off the ground. Um, but all the permits are in place. The construction has started. If you go and look, uh, drive up to the MOD area, you'll see large panels ab above the, um, MOD building above the RV lot, and then below the MOD complex on the hillside, on the north hill, south facing hillside on the north, you'll see a whole bank of um, solar panels. I think the newspaper reported yesterday that more than a thousand panels have been installed. Now what has to happen next is all the electrical connections have to be made. So um, there's still a lot of work done to be done with the infrastructure part of it, but the, the big stuff, the, the, the way it's gonna look in the future is how it looks literally right now. Um, so again, this is not a project that Golden Rain took on. It's not costing us a dollar to put this solar farm on that hillside. Uh, a third party owns it and will operate it for the next 20 years. It's anticipated that we're gonna save, conservatively save about $6 million over that period of time. In year one, we're looking to save about $250,000 on our electric bill. So um, the way that works is the third party owns it and they bill us just like, um, uh, I should say, uh, yeah, they, they will bill us like PG&E bills us for power, but it's a rate much, much lower than PG&E's rate. So, um, and for that, in exchange, they own the equipment and they will maintain it and operate it and ensure that we have power to deliver to our, to our manors, uh, not our manors, to our Golden Rain properties, I should say. Um, once the construction is fully complete, and so we expect this to be done near the end of October, we um, will then repave the parking lot, the RV parking lot, which hasn't been done since it was installed. Um, so it's in, it's in really bad need of, of uh, a replacement. And then all the RVs will get off our streets and back up to where they belong in the RV lot. So um, hang, hang on. I know people are really upset about the RVs out in the community and they definitely are not 
the greatest to have in our neighborhoods unless you're an RV owner. Um, but everybody else who doesn't own one, it just, it's an eyesore. So um, we've got another couple more months and then it should all be done and everything will be back to normal and we'll begin saving money. I should say that once they complete the construction and all the electrical connections, there is one final piece and that's to get PG&E to turn it on. And PG&E is not prompt on turning these kinds of systems on. So it could be a few weeks, it could be a few months, it could be half a year for them to come out and actually activate it and turn it on. So PG&E has already done preliminary work there. So they're, you know, they had to sign off on, on the application originally. They've already done a, a big part of their preliminary work that they need to do. Um, but they still have to activate it and ensure that it's safe and everything else. So still, still to come, construction done by the end of October, and then we wait for PG&E to turn it on. Uh, next up is uh, PG&E fire safety, since I'm talking about PG&E. Um, so we, we, we reported in the Rossmore News last week that um, there's a problematic power pole, which is um, near entry 16 on uh, Golden Rain Road. It's not on our property. It's not on mutual property. It's not on Golden Rain property. It's on Akalani School District property. That's the site a year ago where there was a fire. And that fire, it's a very steep hillside. This particular power pole is about 150 feet below our property line, down a, a very steep hillside. But it's, the, it's a power pole where the power comes up from uh, Tice Valley Boulevard. It comes up the hillside and then it goes underground right at that point, and it comes into Rossmore. And that last power pole, the last one, it has been the site of residents claim four fires in the last 12 years. And, now, and certainly we know about the one last year, and we know about one that we've documented a, a few years back. Um, we have been met with PG&E numerous times about this pole. We're concerned about it. it. Again, it's not on our property, so we can't maintain the vegetation on it. Um, but we've met with PG&E, as I say, multiple times. They finally agreed to replace the pole. Um, they had made a commitment to the community when they were here last year, last summer, to replacing that pole. Uh, when they were here in September, they met at the event center, had a big standing room only event, and they said they would replace it. And here we are a year later and they had not replaced it. And that each time we have met with them, they keep saying, we're gonna take care of it, we're gonna take care of it. The latest what, last month was that they were gonna take care of it next year. Well, that's just not acceptable, and we told them that. And um, so finally they did, we got the fire department involved, and um, they've agreed to, re to de redesign that pole and replace it with something. It, it, right now it's just a wooden pole. They would likely replace it with something metal. They would spread the wires out so that the animals that get on those wires don't close the circuit, get electrocuted, fall to the ground, and ignite the brush underneath, which is how the, the previous fires have, had happened. So um, we're encouraged that they've done that. Um, and then also, they agreed to make a one-time clearance under this poll. Um, They're not required to do that under the law. Uh, Akalani School District actually is the responsible party, but they are, Akalani's had already met the minimum standard for the size of parcel, which did not include removal of the vegetation directly underneath that pole. That's not a requirement for the school district. So we continued to work with the school district and PG&E and pg e did agree to make a 10-foot clearance circumference around the pole, clearing all the brush. And they notified us that they had taken care of that. We visually looked over the fence, the 150 feet down. It looked like it might have been done, but we're not allowed to trespass on school district property. However, one of our residents did. And uh, as we reported in the newspaper last week, they hiked down there and took their hiking pole, and, which is about 42 inches long, and measured it and they did not clear 10 feet around. They did in some parts, but not all of it. They cleared it about four feet uh, at one part. So we, he provided the photographs. We submitted, returned them to PG&E and said, you gotta do better than this. And so they agreed to come and clear it out to the full 10 feet. And again, it's not an easy job. This is not flat land. This is very, very steep hillside, um, but they're gonna take care of it. So that will, um, minimize the risk, doesn't eliminate it, but it minimizes it at least until PG&E replaces the pole, um, hopefully by the end of this year. Um, what else? Uh, I wanted to uh, acknowledge, first I wanted to notify the board and I wanted to acknowledge to uh, staff and I want the community to know. 
a little bit about workers' compensation. This is decidedly very unsexy. This is not something people's eyes glaze over when you talk about workers' comp. Workers' compensation is an insurance program that's mandated by the state of California. Every employer in California must have workers' comp insurance. It's, it's a legal requirement. Um, so what it does, what the program does, is it, it, employers have to go out and purchase this insurance on the open market. And then what the program does is it provides injured workers with medical care and replacement wages if they are out of work due to the workplace injury. Um, so, so we have that. And um, when I got here in 2015, I learned that our workers' comp insurance rates were about 30% higher than the state averages. Uh, and because we had, did not have very good uh, what they call claims experience. So we had a relatively high number of claims and we had a very high dollar cost value in losses, insurance losses, which is hospital cost and, and wages primarily. And in exchange for workers' compensation insurance, employees um, give up some of their rights to sue their employer. So that's, that's the way the state set the program up. And it's not just California, every state in the country has a workers' comp program set up the same way, very similar. Workers' compensation insurance is, is a very, very complicated formula on how they arrive at the premium that employers are required to pay. And, I, and it's based on a number of factors. It's based on the wages. It's based on the type of work that each employee does in their job classification. A desk job has a much lower level of, of likelihood of being injured on the job than, let's say, a roofer or an electrician uh, or a landscape person who's out there mowing lawns and using heavy equipment and that kind of thing. So the likelihood of them being injured is much higher than somebody who's sitting behind a desk. So the state creates rates for each job classification. Uh, for somebody out in the field doing landscape work, I think it's around nearly 12% of wages gets paid. For, for every dollar of wages, 12% more gets paid for workers' comp premium for that employee. For a desk person, it's about three quarters of 1%, so less than 1% uh, of their wages. So that's how it's calculated. Every position in the company, in the Golden Rain Foundation, is calculated and a premium is paid for that. So. Um, then the, the, the way they calculate these premiums, they look at the actual cost of claims for the preceding three years uh, and the actual number of claims for the preceding three years. They take all these factors into consideration. There's a formula that the state developed that insurers are required to use in calculating the premium. So there's the backstory. In 2014, our, we paid on average 6.15% of our wages for workers' comp premium. In 2020, we've gotten our quote already for next year, we're gonna pay 3.15%. That's almost half of what the number was in 2014. So now to give you an idea as to the magnitude of this, this is all, we're talking about a lot of money. So if we were to pay 6.15% of um, wages for 2020, uh, uh, for next year in workers' comp premium, we would pay $880,000 in workers' comp premium, almost $900,000. But because it's only 3.13%, um, uh, we will pay $448,000. That's a savings of $433,000. And why is that important? Because it comes out of your pocket. Um, that's, um, that gets built into the coupon. So the fact that we're saving uh, $433,000 is, is significant. There's not a lot of places we can cut cost at that magnitude, but this is one of them. The way we've been able to do this is by implementing a safety program. And um, in 20, early 2016, a few months after I got here, we met with the ins our insurers. They kind of told us all the bad news. We had gotten more quotes for the following year in the spring. Everything just looked dismal. We were continuing to pay this 30% premium higher than the state averages. So we went to work and we've um, begun with uh, workplace trainings, weekly tailgate meetings for those that have the high risk positions that are out in the field. Um, we've replaced broken or faulty equipment. 
uh, broken ladders, you know, that could potentially be a risk, we've replaced them, where employees would say, well, we're not sure we can spend the money to replace faulty equipment. No, 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 that's, that's not an option. We are gonna replace the equipment. We're gonna make sure that people are safe on the job. It's just good business. It's good for, um, it keeps employees on the job, keeps them safe and healthy. Uh, their, their personal life improves or is a lot better than it is if they're at home watching TV all day with their leg up in a cast kind of a thing. So, um, so I wanna acknowledge the staff in particular, the management team that really bought into this uh, and has worked really hard at um, encouraging everyone to be safe. And the common misconception that people have about workplace safety is that it's management's job to keep the employees safe. And that's true to an extent but what we had to instill and change the thinking for everybody was that it's everybody's responsibility to be safe on the job. So if you're a staff member, not a manager, and you walk down a hallway and you see a, a wire or a cord or a book or papers on the ground or a banana peel, do something about it. Either pick it up yourself or alert a manager to do something, address the safety hazard. And by getting everybody to think in the, these terms, it's resulted in this significant savings to the community. So I wanna thank the management team, and I also wanna acknowledge the staff. The staff have bought into this as well. They, um, they appreciate that we're paying attention to, the, to their livelihoods and their safety on the job. So um, anyway, I want, I want the community to know and understand that. Now there's something I could not put in, this came, um, uh, after I had drafted this report for the board packet, which was in the paper last week and ran in yesterday's paper, um, Comcast notified us that they are removing Turner Classic Movies from our TV package. And I, I've been told by many, many, many people how important that particular channel is. In fact, it's so important that in 2015, when we negotiated the current TV con we began negotiating the current key TV contract with Comcast. We moved our package from, from the basic TV package, which they had removed Turner Classic Movies from in 2015. We upgraded it to the, what they call the digital preferred package with Comcast, only to get Turner Classic Movies because it was so important to so many people. And now we just got the notice a week or a week and a half ago or so that they are removing it again from this, the package we're on now. And they're moving it into a, another tier that costs $10 more. So the residents, if they want it, they can, according to Comcast, they can buy it from them. <coughs> so we, um, residents are very upset about this. I've gotten a lot of correspondence, people very angry about it. Um, we immediately notified Comcast that that was unacceptable. Now, I have to explain we, we talked about this with the radio uh, stations that they removed a few months ago. There's no cable operator that will guarantee the stations that they provide in a package. Uh, residents have to understand that. There's nothing we can do about that. We don't have the power or the authority or the legal authority to insist that a channel, a given channel is included in a package. We can't do that. No cable operator will negotiate a package under those terms. So, um, so they have the legal right to remove channels. They can do that. Um, we don't like it when they do it. And they do add channels on occasion, but usually they're things nobody's ever heard about and nobody's probably ever gonna watch. Um, so so we, we let them know right away that we were unhappy that this was unacceptable and asked them to reconsider and see if there's anything they could do to accommodate Rossmore. Now, this change that they're making is not just to Rossmore. This change they're making is to the whole country. They've removed Turner Classic Movies from the digital preferred package, and now you have to pay for it in this, what they call the sports and entertainment package for $10. So um, I've been dealing not with our local rep, I've been dealing with the, the guy who's in charge of all of California for Comcast. And he has committed to me, he's the same one who was able to restore KQED for us on the TV package uh, for the radio, I should say, for the radio station to appear on the TV package. So he has promised that he is looking into this with the higher ups at Comcast back east to see if there's anything that they could do to accommodate this. He had told me ye yesterday that this is, in, we've gone round and round with this now for, for, for about 10 days. Uh, he told me uh, yesterday that, he said, Tim, you just have to understand, I don't have a lot of power. This is something they've, the corporate has, a decision they've made nationally that we can't just add a channel for a given community. But they're gonna see what, if there's anything they, that can be done. 
Worst case is that we, in two and a half years when this contract expires, a little less than two and a half years, we will have this on the table to negotiate again. Um, but right now, they've made the decision to discontinue it and we are expressed our displeasure with that and we're hoping that they will do something to accommodate us. So um, hold tight, stay tuned. We'll provide updates as we learn a little bit more. So that's not in, in the package, but I, it's new news and it's an important issue for a lot of people here. The last item is employee transitions. In July, we had four employees begin their employment with Golden Rain. Peyton Hall, a new lifeguard. Jordan Lilly, a utility repair worker. Alec O'Young, a videographer with Channel 28. And Santos Rodriguez, an irrigation technician for the golf course. We had one employee leave Golden Rain in July, Catherine Bork, a news carrier. And that's my report. Thank you, Tim. A couple things. <clears throat> I want to thank the staff from the board for working on safety as much as they have. That $400,000 translates into $5 a month, roughly, on the coupon. So it's a significant amount. And I also want to thank Tim, since that was one of his projects when he came here, and he really honed in on that. And so um, I think it's made a big difference. Thank you. The other thing is, I think the celebration for Carrie's is September 10th. There was some confusion in the paper, and I contacted Ann yesterday, because it said 19th in the headline and 10th in the body. She said it's on the 10th. So there'll be a correction next week. That was an email from her, so. So I saw that as well. I should have mentioned that. I saw that. Now, the restaurant operator told me it was September 19th. Okay, so, so let's we'll just to, we'll have to get that check cleared, back. cleared up. Yeah. Mary. So I'd vote for the 19th since the 10th, I think, is our budget meeting. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to the party. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we could have the party there. We could have the budget meeting there. It says the treasurer. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, check back. Make sure you check. Next week's newspaper is going to have it correct. So now the residence forum, Barbara. Okay. Well, wait, Mary. Oh. I uh, also want to echo your thanks to the staff and management on the workers' comp. And I am amazed at how fast uh, the safety record improved. And I attribute that to the, the tone at the top when it, it's, you have to change culture. So congratulations, Tim, and all of you. It's a pretty amazing accomplishment so quickly. OK, Barbara. Whoops. Ken. I wasn't quite sure about the, if we went to legal counsel, did you ask Tony about the Comcast uh, account about opposing their moving Turner Classic movie up into sports package? That seems like such a blatant attempt to alter the contract to charge us more, $10 more, because uh, there's no rhyme or reason to move it to a sports package, and that, that almost borders on malfeasance in my opinion. The question I have actually, uh, the other one is, uh, can we, do we have the option of lowering our, our coupon or our, our allowance for this to the lower package that we had before T, uh, Turner Classic was moved to this upscale? So the answer is um, we've, we, I've, I've spoken to our attorney previously about their ability to add or remove channels. They have the legal right to do that. There's a clause in the contract. As I said, no cable operator will guarantee their channels. The, the package that they're moving it to is called the sports and entertainment package. So it, it includes oh, sports and channels and entertainment stations, and it's $10 more. Um, and I believe it's October, in October at some point when this is gonna go into effect. Um, hopefully they will mitigate this in some fashion, whether it's a reduction in our rate, which I doubt they will do. Um, preferably they just figure a way to restore Turner Classic Movies just for Rossmore but um, they're, that's what they're looking into right now. If they don't, can we move down a, a tier? Uh, we, because they, in be 2015, a, they moved Turner Classic up into this package, and so we had to pay more for that. So if they move that out, do we have the option of, of moving back down to the lower tier? Well, actually, when we negotiated the package, they actually reduced the um, rate. <laughs> We, we, we drove a hard bargain, so they reduced the rate for the cable TV that we were paying, and then they gave us this extraordinary deal on internet, which is only $17. So $38 for TV, $17 for um, internet. It was, a, it was the whole package, so we got this amazing deal, 
um, at, which also included this upgrade for these channels that would include Turner, which is part of the digital preferred package, but they've removed digi the Turner from digital preferred for the whole country. So they, they're trying to figure out new ways to monetize. I, you know, they're a big company. They're, they're the biggest provider of cable TV in the United States. So they have power. They can figure out ways to do this, we hope. Um, and we know that they've expressed to us many times how important we are to them in terms of um, our relationship. We are, in the Western United States, we are the largest contract that they have for bulk TV and internet. Um, I saw last month that Leisure World Maryland, which is one of our sister projects, um, they just negotiated a deal with Comcast as well. And um, they were not with Comcast previously. That includes internet also. So, um, so I know we're, we're important to them. I hope that they will make the right call. And we will put, do all we can to put pressure on them to either restore the station or reduce the cost or some, some other way to mitigate this. So we'll, we'll see what they come back with. Carl? Yes, it would seem that we should consider this in our con this change of tiers in our new contract negotiations. Okay, now the residence form, Barbara. Good morning. Um, each person will have three minutes. Please give your name and your address. If you have any written material, drop it off with Deborah uh, when you're done. And I'll call. Um, three people at a time. And if I mispronounce your name, I'm sorry. So the first three people are Mary Taylor, Christine Marson, and Amal Malik. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mary Taylor. I reside at 1217 Leisure Lane, number 10 in Rossmore. Uh, so I've chosen to speak at this point because uh, I'm addressing three items on the agenda, 10A, B, and C, which talks about the mission statement. I wanted to share an experience that I had about a year ago. I was in uh, the city of Walnut Creek uh, at an event, and I was speaking with an older woman, white, and she uh, asked me where I lived. And when I shared with her where I lived, her response was she didn't think they let black people live here. So what I would like to share with you is, and then I shared with her that, you know, housing discrimination has been illegal for 50 years. So there is obviously a branding issue, unless that's the brand you want. Uh, I understand that this may have occurred from the original charter, which uh, excluded certain people. So I would encourage you to include the word diverse or embracing or welcoming diversity uh, in the mission statement so that uh, it affects that, that branding. Okay, thank you. Good morning, I'm Christine Monson. I live at 1905 Cactus Court, number three. Thank you for this opportunity to provide comments. Um, I will also be speaking about the mission statement and the value statement. And I apologize, I might have to leave, and I, uh, unfortunately I won't be able to hear your discussion. I have a previous commitment. First and foremost, I strongly encourage you to keep inclusiveness as a core value here in Rossmore. Um, it's currently in your value statement. If you want to bump it up to the mission statement, that would be even better. But I'd also like to ask you to establish a means to implement and, if necessary, enforce consequences for those in our community that oppose inclusiveness, such as racists, anti-Semites, Islamophobes, and those that just can't seem to wrap their head around people who love those of the same gender, those of a different culture or race, or those with a different religion. As a white woman, I find myself in the unusual position here in Rossmore as a part of the majority. Certainly whites have had a majority in California, the nation, and here in Rossmore for many years. Um, but thankfully that's changing, albeit slowly, uh, as we become a more diverse nation and a more diverse community here in Rossmore. But diversity and the necessary inclusiveness 
does not always come easily for those that have enjoyed their majority position all of their lives. Certainly one place that I'm familiar with is the women's movement. Um, it took laws and regulations and enforcement to make sure that those who were resisting changes uh, would embrace them or at least let them be. Um, I'm sure most of the women here on the board have been through the same things I have been, where we weren't welcome, and then hopefully we became an established member of our communities where, in the workplace. Unfortunately, we again find ourselves in the need for some nudging here in Rossmore. As a white woman, I could ignore this because it doesn't really affect me. But I have a partner who's not white. And I see firsthand the impact on him when he comes home after someone asks him at our local gas station if he's a terrorist, or if someone hurls racial epithets him at him and tries to hit him in the GRF parking lot, or if someone says he should go back where he came from. Unfortunately, something that we're hearing more and more nationally and here in Rossmore. <clears throat> And as we all know, it's only gotten worse these last few years. This morning, I'm asking you to step forward and not only include inclusiveness as a core value, okay, but strategies so that the people who are others feel this is their home here, as well as those of us who are white. Good morning. My name is Lamal Molik, and I reside at 1905 Cactus Court Number 3. My comments today are directed to the first part of the Statement of Values, which states that GRF will endeavor to maintain Rossmore, amongst other things, as an inclusive community. I'm sure you are familiar with George Orwell's Animal Farm, where one of the animal characters says, we are all equal, but some of us are more equal than others. My f experience as a 15-year resident in Rossmore tells me that we have a small but vocal group of people who firmly believe that they are more equal than others. They are convinced that their claim to their own safety, security, and quality of life outweighs and even negates that of other residents. I would like to share with you a personal experience from my early years here when I was working at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and didn't spend much time at Rossmore except weekday evenings and weekends. My neighbor downstairs, an elderly Caucasian woman, started accusing me of operating a treadmill directly above her bedroom from midnight to dawn for the sole purpose of ruining her sleep. What began as a nuisance quickly accelerated into harassment, leaving nasty notes at my door, the offhand racist remarks, and pounding on my door late at night and early weekend mornings. I asked for help from the district mutual director, Don Little, for bringing an end to this harassment. He visited my manor, confirmed that I had no treadmill, and shared his findings with my neighbor. But she insisted that I was harming her health. Don Little summoned both of us to a meeting with him and a member of the counseling department. He asked us to restate in the presence of the counseling staff what he, we had told him individually. He then told my neighbor that he had found no basis to her accusations against me, ordered her to stop harassing me, and stated that she would face serious consequences if she persisted. The harassment stopped. Don Little could have avoided his responsibility to act, either by suggesting that I was somehow provoking her to behave that way, or that I should ignore her because she may have been cognitively impaired. He could have, but he didn't. I point out his actions to the CEO and the GRF board members as an object lesson on how to enforce inclusiveness as a way to protect the rights of safety, security, and quality of life for all Rossmore residents against those who think that it's their exclusive right alone.
The next three speakers are Mary Moreau, Judith Schumacher Jennings, and John Nutley. I certainly agree with the people who just spoke. I have a black grandchild, and she comes to visit me once in a while. Uh, I know she's not old enough to live here. OK, um, my name is, good morning, Mr. Chairperson and board members. Uh, my name is Mary Moreau. I live at 1349 Tarmgan Drive, number four. Several years ago, I came before this board and warned the board about the toxicity of Roundup. Recently, I read several letters to the editor in Rossmore News where residents expressed concerns about Roundup. I want to add to those concerns. Glyphosate, and, and I have provided everything that I'm talking from. One is from Mercola.com, and another one is Dr. Jill. And if you look up, if you Google toxicity, glyphosate to toxicity, you can get many, many articles. Uh, glyphosate is the active ingredient in the popular herbicide Roundup. According to the World Health Organization, glyphosate is now declared a probable cancer, and it may be the most toxic man-made environmental disaster in history. France's highest court found Monsanto guilty of lying as far back as 2008 about the toxicity of its popular weed killer Roundup. California, and this is a heads up, California recently became the first state to issue plants to list glyphosate as a chemical known to cause cancer. Um, glyphosate has pro proven highly, in perhaps the most ironic twist of all, glyphosate has proven highly toxic to the basic phase one detoxification of the liver. So you have a toxic chemical that makes it harder to detox. Glyphosate may trigger autoimmunity, such as celiac disease. It, um, it's, they spray wheat. Most corn and soy is, if it's not uh, organic, has been sprayed with glyphosate. And by the way, glyphosate goes into the food. It's not like a pesticide that you can wash off. In addition to uh, celiac disease, researchers now believe that glyphosate may be linked to the following diseases, autism, autoimmune diseases, cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's disease, inflammatory bowel disease, says cardiovascular disease, depression, and infertility. Glyphosate is also toxic to our gut microbiome. Okay. Please read these and please Google glyphosate toxicity and do what you can to get rid of it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh oh. Okay. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Thank you, Deborah Rose, Tim O'Keefe, Bob Kelso, all members of the board for your service, and thanks all you out in the audience for participating in our Rossmore democracy. My name is Judith Schumacher Jennings. I live at 670 Terra California Drive, apartment six. I spoke to the board about five years ago as a member of Sustainable Rossmore, in favor of uh, solar panels on the hillside. As Tim just reported, they're going up to all our benefit. At the time, one of the arguments that was made was that solar technology was the wave of the future and that Rossmore should get on board. 
Last Friday, I participated in the Interfaith Council panel on diversity as a lesbian and a member of the Rossmore Lesbian Social Club. Today, I'm speaking to your review of the Rossmore mission statement. I'm happy to know the value statement inclu includes the word inclusive. I want to encourage the board to consider diversity as the wave of the future and that we at Rossmore should get on board. I hope you will be proactive in supporting diversity. I hope that might include diversity training for yourselves. And speaking of workers' comp earlier, Tim noted what a huge difference training can make. I know I have found diversity training to be very helpful. At the interfaith meeting, Will McGarvey spoke about the golden rule and the platinum rule. Rather than treating others as you want to be treated, the platinum rule asks us to treat others as they would have you treat them. That requires that we find out what they're thinking and listen to them. Along those lines, I hope the board would consider a standing diversity committee to advise the board. Thank you, and thank you all for your good work. Uh, I'm John Nutley, 1971 Golden Rain Road, number one, entry 11. I want to talk about the trust agreement. The trust agreement requires that the Golden Rain maintain the various public facilities for the benefit of the mutuals. Now that means that you can't do too much for yourself unless the mutuals agree to it. If you're going to have new expenses or planning for the distant future, you have to rely upon your own funds you can't ask the mutuals to put money into your future pocket for your future needs. The proposed reserve fund is a problem that you'll have to look into in terms of the trust agreement. Future needs of the Golden Rain Board is a problem that they have to solve without recourse to the mutuals, unless the mutuals agree to it. And that is a problem that you will have to look into. Back in the 1970s, the Golden Rain proposed a fund, and they put it on the coupon. And first, Walnut Creek Mutual says no. First much you said you cannot store funds for yourself and ask us to put money into it. At a meeting, the two boards agreed that there would be a change, that they would specify a particular purpose for such a fund. And I suggest that you look into your reserve and fund 
and how it might be affected by what is stated in the trust agreement between the Golden Rain Board and the mutuals. Thank you. We have two more speakers. Wayne Leeser, I hope I'm saying that correctly, and Steve Roth. Good morning, board. I don't see Wayne, so I'll just step up here. Maybe I could get all six minutes? No, <laughs> I suppose not. Actually, it's kind of fun to be back in the room uh, uh, with you again. Uh, I, I miss uh, being with all of you, and uh, uh, I've heard this a number of times for myself. I'll just extend it to you. Uh, your service is important, uh, and the governance in the community is essentially the responsibility of all of its uh, participants, and so uh, I thank you for your service. You know, when John uh, stood and uh, made his uh, entry comments, I was afraid that he and I were going to be on the wrong side or opposite sides of the same issue. We're not. I think that the $2 million reserve that has been proposed not just once or twice, but at least very officially and very forcefully by the Finance Committee recently, is something that you ought to allow and make happen more slowly than a single swap that creates uh, that fund uh, without what I'll call cause. We all know that there are opportunities for the pot and potential for costs that we are not able to cover without looking at a reserve. But in fact, we've operated this way for an awful long time successfully, having created a number of amenities and facilities that still need to be maintained. I think I would just uh, make one further comment and then uh, indicate that I, I object to the $2 million reserve being created immediately. We've always had about a million and a half, Rick is my figure, or memory at the, uh, in the trust estate uh, at the end of each year after spending that which needed to be done. And it seems to me like we, if you want a $2 million reserve, uh, maybe we ought to be a little more concerned about having as many people own property in Rossmore without paying the transfer fee, reducing the amount of income that comes into the trust fund. Uh, the one final comment I was going to make is that in your changing of the mission statement, uh, you go back to a really important uh, focus that comes from the trust, and that is accepting and denoting your important responsibility to maintain the facilities we have. And we are getting to a point where there are still quite too, quite a many, too many uh, facilities that uh, are allowed to be uh, below standard. It, we, we've set that standard with the event center and other places. Now it's time that we maintain it. Deborah. Uh, Bobby Osobel would like to speak during this time as well, as she had mistakenly set further in the agenda. Okay. Thank you. I, I'm Bobby Osobel, 2645 Tarmigan Drive 1. Uh, thank you. I have a meeting I have to attend. Um, I th you, you may have been there or know there were over 100, maybe over 200 people who were at the interfaith meeting sponsored by their diversity committee uh, the other day, Friday. And there were people hanging out at the doors <laughs> who couldn't fit in. So diversity is something a lot of people here care about. 
and many people didn't know this talk was going to be happening today. I know um, I couldn't tell people in the club I, I work with. And um, first of all, I also think it's wonderful. All of you volunteer your time here. I'm just so impressed. Thank you. Um, OK, SITS Inclusive is included in the Rossmore website. I have two suge uh, three suggestions for how to make inclusiveness more meaningful if you wish to move ahead with this. I would like that. One is to create a definition of inclusive so residents and prospective buyers know what we mean. The definition should be perhaps on the Rossmore website. Secondly, I think we need a safe tracking system for acts of harassment and discrimination. A safe tracking system should include harmful acts, and I feel probably it's mostly to persons of color living in this community. A tracking system should create a safe place where residents know they can go with confidentiality and the harmful experiences be notated. Making notes is very important. If, if we wanted to, perhaps there should be a way that this tracking system would meet and interview the people uh, who were involved and you know, it would even be nice to be compassionate to them. But the, if not, the notes themselves are very important. We need to know what's going on here in Rossmore. Um, also, my third comment is Rossmore website include diversity on its website saying something like diversity, Rossmore, <laughs> sorry, Rossmore is a diversity welcoming community. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the resident member committee reports, the Aquatics Advisory Committee, Brian. Good morning. Um, oop, excuse me. There we go. Um, <laughs> everything's sliding over here. We, um, our report is, is complete and uh, as, as noted in your packet, but I wanted to make a few comments on a couple of things we discussed at our meeting. Um, we've decided to adjust our meeting schedule um, annually to a every other month schedule. Um, we worked with, uh, with Jeff and with the, um, the fitness committee on this uh, so that we can, uh, we're both gonna adjust our schedules. Uh, Catherine will tell you more about that, about their, their adjustments. Uh, we've decided to go to the every other meeting, uh, monthly meeting schedule starting in January. And uh, we'll also form an, uh, a subcommittee of the two committees to um, take care of things that come up in between um, and hopefully maintain contact with the community on that. Um, I just want to make sure everybody understood that. Um, but hopefully we'll find a way to communicate information to people so that they can get in touch with members of the committee in the interim uh, between meetings. Um, one of my uh, regrets about going to an every other month schedule is we'll lose a residence forum every other month and we don't get a chance to have everybody come in and, and talk about what they'd like to see happen with the aquatics thing. So hopefully people will be encouraged to communicate with us through email or telephone. Question, Sue? Can I clear up when he's talking about the two committees meeting, he's talking about the fitness and the aquatic together. Right. He just said two, so. We so the subcommittee that's gonna be uh, meeting, is that gonna be public meetings where people can come then or not? Uh, I guess they would be, yeah. I think, I think we're gonna pick one of the slots, one of the regular meeting slots to meet in. Um, but so, I think that those meetings are gonna be as needed. Um, so if we don't have an agenda, we won't have a meeting. Okay, I think Jeff's gonna clarify something okay. here. Sneaking up in the back. Okay. The, the intent of the working group between aquatics and fitness would not be a public meeting. It would be a working group as needed. They would then report out to both the fitness and aquatics. So no decision making, just discussion to work through issues, report out. 
So I, I guess I would hope that this would be considered a trial, and if we find that it's not yeah. adequate, that uh, people are feeling it's too long between the opportunities to right. complain or comment, that uh, we'll, we can switch back. So did yeah. you establish a, a trial period? Uh, we didn't, but it's, it's always open for discussion. We haven't really written anything in stone. Uh, the impetus was to, to make better use of people's time. Uh, there have been frequent meetings in the past, at least for our committee, where we've had a really short agenda and meetings have been like 25, 30 minutes. Okay. Um, sometimes dragging everybody down in the boardroom for just that kind of thing makes me feel a little bit like we're not using their time well. Um, and hopefully we can right. uh, work on that. Okay, other questions, Sue? I think it's implied when we did this, because I happen to be on this, that it is a trial mm -hmm. to see how that works. So yeah, the okay. two, com because we're, we're all in the same building, the aquatics and the um, fitness centers. So they're, what they're trying to do is mm -hmm. figure that out. I also noticed that there was some discussion about uh, uh, swim lessons, and there was a comment that this was going to have to be approved by the board, but I don't see a motion to that or any suggestion that that be on the agenda. Uh, I thought we included that. Yeah. Sorry. That action will actually be in your uh, proposed budget for 2020, yes. okay. so it'll be a new program in there. Okay, great. Any other questions for Brian? Thank you. Oh, good. Thanks. Audit Committee Dwight. Good morning. Uh, a couple things to report. You have the minutes from our last uh, meeting, but uh, probably the most important thing is that John Kikuchi was uh, nominated and elected vice chair of the committee, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, he has uh, concluded some, or at least a, a, a major portion of work in terms of updating the code of conduct. That is out for legal review, and so uh, John's team has done a great job there, and we'll have more to report on that after we get uh, reports back from legal. Uh, the biggest item the audit committee is working on is looking at candidates for uh, external auditors for 2019 and the future. Uh, Rick Chakoff did a great job along with Chris Young of, of um, uh, getting RFPs out to six firms. Uh, four firms uh, responded. Uh, those firms have been interviewed and we're in the process of finalizing uh, the final candidates uh, and our target is to have a recommendation to the board at the September board meeting. Any questions? Mary. Yeah, uh, Dwight, I think maybe based on some of the comments from the residents around diversity and tracking, what came to mind was the new whistleblower policy. Uh, that, so maybe we need to publish that in the paper or something so people recognize that to the extent uh, they experience harassment, there is a way to anonymously uh, report that. It gets investigated by the HR director. Um, and of course, some of those complaints belong to the mutuals, not to GRF, but it is at least one mechanism I thought of that we just put in place. Thank you, Audit Committee. That's a very good point, Mary, and um, I'm not sure what presence it has on the website, but that would be another way to publicize the whistleblower. And it is intended for those sorts of circumstances, so great. Any other questions for Dwight? Thank you. Thank you. Finance Committee, Bill Dorban. Good morning. Uh, the regular meeting of the GRF Finance Committee was held last Tuesday. We reviewed our recommendation of last month that the trust estate fund maintain a target minimum fund balance of $2 million by the end of 2019. The committee continues to make that recommendation with the understanding that the prior recommendation did not include the words by the end of 2019. The amount that we're talking about is a target minimum fund balance. It's the amount that we retain in our account going forward from year to year. And it's used for contingencies that might come up. It is not a reserve in the accounting sense. It is not a uh, replacement reserve like the mutuals have at all. It's you know, available for contingencies. It's available for whatever the board needs on a uh, 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 unexpected of an unexpected nature. These might include, for example, uninsured losses from earth slippage, insurance deductibles, and so on, 
earthquake insurance deductibles, unexpected urgent project needs, and the possible reduction in our revenue from some sort of economic downturn where there aren't a lot of transfers taking place, which brings the funds into the uh, fund, the trust the state fund to begin with. So if we were to call it a minimum a balance rather than a reserve of some sort, I think it would be a better word to use uh, as a, uh, a description. The committee will continually review the, re the revenues and disbursements of the trust estate fund and will regularly report on the current level of available funds for additional projects given the level of target minimum fund balance, minimum balance, that the board chooses, if any. So we will continue to monitor things on a monthly basis as revenues and expenses and so on uh, are incurred. Uh, at this time, do you have any questions? Mary? Yeah, I just want to make some comments um, based on some of the feedback we got from residents on the reserve fund. I've been on the finance committee for seven years now, I think, and I've lived in Rossmore 11 years. And over the 11 years, we have built the event center, Creekside, we've upgraded the fitness center, and we've done that through borrowing. So what has gone on for the last 10 years is a lot of building of new amenities based on borrowed money. That's not a bad thing. We're all benefiting from all of that. But what's changing now going forward is we can't look to borrow more money to continue to finance, and we can't be spending money that we don't have. Uh, uh, the article in uh, the 20, for August 21st news showed that 40% of the uh, trust fund revenue goes to pay off debt. So what we need to do now and what the Finance Committee is proposing is that we make sure that we have this target minimum balance of $2 million as the money coming in and going out ebbs and flows over the year, over the year because it doesn't all come in in January. And so we are maintaining this balance so that we don't have to run out and borrow more money. So that, that is what's changed. Uh, so I know in the past where it may have seemed like we always had the balance, well, it was borrowed money. We had construction loans. So I hope that clarifies some of uh, the Finance Committee's recommendation. Dale? Thank you for your report. Um, <laughs> as, as our buildings age, um, and as maybe the economy changes and costs go up, would you maybe anticipate that we might even, as the years go ahead, have more than $2 million um, set aside for this? The discussion is an ongoing discussion, and there has been discussion of the number at $2 million based on a number of factors, including the debt service. But uh, certainly, as, as time goes on, uh, that number will be reevaluated and recommendations, if any, for changes will be made to the board. Uh, Dale, one of the things that the, the Finance Committee is uh, uh, charged with is reviewing the, uh, among other things, the membership transfer fee on an annual basis and the budget for the following year. That will occur for the trust estate expenditures and income. Uh, in January, uh, December and January, as we go forward for the, uh, the trust the state budget. And that's, of course, a separate budget, separate issue from the coupon and the uh, operating activities right. that are going to occur uh, next month. Thank you very much. Yeah. Carl? Yes, it is also my understanding that we have a lot, until we start paying off some of our loans, which is about, what, eight, nine years out or so. Seven that we have limited borrowing power. Therefore, it is probably prudent in terms of a risk assessment point of view that we do not want to place Rossmore in a position where we need to spend money that we cannot acquire and cannot get. Les? Bill, you know that I object to the use of the reserve fund. 
I think that the Golden Rain Foundation is not in a position to just put money in a pocket and leave it there. Uh, I, I like the idea of ending the 2019 year with a minimum fund balance of $2 million, and we've always had a, a fund balance at the end of the year, and it's added on for the next year. Uh, I want to make clear in my mind that this does not mean that this money is not available to use in an emergency or in any other situation. I, I think we need to continue to talk about it as a minimum ending balance for 2019. 2020 will change. Right, I think that's, Rick's gonna comment on that. Just, just a point I want to I want to make is this this two million dollar recommended balance is net of any committed funds. So if you have some construction in progress, and there's you know let's say two hundred thousand left to complete it, you would have two point two million dollars possibly in the bank, but you have two millions that's uncommitted. So I just want to clarify that too. It's not just your bank balance. And I think we're it isn't going to be a reserve. It's going to be a targeted minimum balance. And the other thing I wanted to point out. Uh, is that things do change. And for example, one of the big things that's changing is that our coverage for ground movement is ending this year. So we had some movement up on the hill and it was a total cost of $6 million that uh, GRF could have been on the hook for, depending on what happened in a lawsuit that probably would have been filed. None of that happened because we had insurance covering that. Starting next year, we won't have that insurance. So if there is ground, movement, uh, we will have to fund dealing with that ourselves. So that's another reason that we're doing this balance, uh, targeted minimum balance. Are there other questions or comments? Sue. If you're going to mention this, you ought to mention that we have a minimum deduction if we have an earthquake in, of $4 million. So we're not trying to reserve things. We are trying to keep something in case we have a problem. Trees fall on buildings, for instance. <laughs> so are you finished with your report? And then if so, we'll move on to a motion on this. Do you have other comments about your? No, I'm com complete. OK, Tim. So I just wanted to clarify. You just stated what I w wanted to say. But I want to make sure before you make a motion that you uh, un understand the distinction. So last month, the Finance Committee's rec recommendation was around a cash reserve. And that language is what you see here in the heading for the report, which is what John Nutley saw and saw cash reserves. So that's what he was reacting to. Um, the discussion that occurred at the meeting earlier this week, Bill, that you weren't at, reframed that and called it a targeted minimum balance. So your motion should be around a targeted minimum balance, not a cash reserve, which is contrary to what the title on the agenda says. Just wanted to clarify that. Oh, and one other thing is, the, the um, landslide coverage, it's not next year, it's this year. It went away on January 1 of 2019, yeah. Even worse. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mary. So, uh, so I'm gonna make a motion. Okay. I move that the board establish a $2 million targeted year-end trust estate fund balance net of any committed funds for the year ending 12-31-2019. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Uh, any discussion? There wasn't a resident uh, c comment form for this topic, was there? Okay. Okay, I guess no discussion. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, passed unanimously. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Sue? Season, we are, are, here we're using some terminology like reserve where we met just minimum balance. Right. I've heard many, many times today people res talk about a transfer fee it is a membership transfer fee, and if we could get that out of our mouths, we would be better off because it's for the amenities that the members can use. So uh, we just sometimes, what you know, the terminology is a problem. Okay, thank you, uh, Catherine, Fitness Center Advisory. In July, there were 22,161 combined visits to the fitness center and the pools. 
the revenue for July was $23,860. And that makes a total for the year of $134,328, which I believe goes to the operating fund. Mary, is that right? Yeah. A part-time trainer will be added to the fitness staff soon, and that will be using funds that are still available for 2019. Um, in hiring that trainer, we're, we'd like to add back the Thursday afternoon aquatics class uh, that we lost some time ago, as well as enhance the class and training opportunities we have now. Last month, in discussing the 2020 budget, we explored ways to fill in for canceled classes using video or on-call trainers. Um, this month, we looked at the cost information that the staff provided and found out that it would be an estimated $7,000 for a video program and $10,000 for backup trainers, and we decided to hold off on those proposals. Part of this consideration was a reminder that Active Wellness cut back their manager position to part-time, and that allowed us to hire a full-time fitness lead, Noah Usna. And um, also, as I mentioned, we have another part-time position opening, which may help with some of the canceled classes. We're also looking forward to UC Davis coming in the fall and providing one and a half positions as part of a grant that they receive for a research program in lifestyle education. And that will focus on nutrition and exercise. Um, so we really have an abundance of riches right now without any additional um, funding. So we decided that we would uh, recommend to just keep the current level of funding for the coming year for the, for, um, for the fitness uh, allocation. Um, along with aquatics, um, as Brian mentioned, fitness is considering a change to the committee's meeting schedule. With the completion of the gym and the first year of operation, we have fewer issues that require our attention. So as a result, we decided to meet every other month rather than monthly. A joint ad hoc committee, which will consist of two members from aquatics and two members from fitness, uh, will meet about mutual issues as needed. Due to the September budget meetings, we will convene next on Wednesday, October 9th at 9.30 in the fairway room at Creekside. Uh, residents and board members are always welcome to attend, and uh, we will not meet in September. Uh, any questions? Questions for Catherine? Actually, I would like to just to emphasize, I'm a little concerned about the bi-monthly. I understand I'm all for efficiency and not wasting people's time, but I'm a little concerned. People complain about how slowly Rossmore governance works anyway. So if somebody's going to have to wait a couple of months to get to a residence forum at a meeting and then get passed on to the board, I'd encourage you to figure out some way to publicize in the paper and on the website uh, a way to uh, for residents to comment. Just make it easier if they have complaints so they can get it to you guys and start the process sooner. So That's a good idea. Thank you. Carl? Yes. Rather than the bi-monthly, have you considered merging the aquatics and the fitness center committees and doing the month, month, monthly instead of each one being bi-monthly? Uh, that, that might make more sense. Yeah. Well, yes and no. Um, <laughs> so we, this came up a few years back. Um, and in that discussion, what we realized was that the interests are very different. Aquatics covers not only um, the Tice Creek Fitness Center, but the other two pools. Um, and they focus on the, on the issues of the swimmers, whereas the gym tends to be more exercise focused and very often those people do not swim. We have some crossover, of course, but it, it, the, the envisioning of that was that the swimmers would be sitting through being bored with fitness and fitness would be bored with aquatics and the common discussion would not necessarily, you know, pertain to both. And, you know, do we want someone who doesn't swim 
weighing in on swimming issues. So those were, those were what came up at that point. It made sense to keep it separate. Other questions for Catherine? No, thank you. And Mark is going to give the golf report. I am uh, pinch hitting for John McDonald, who I got a call yesterday, and he, he and his wife, Fran, were enjoying Santa Fe just too much to get back uh, today. So they'll be back tomorrow. Um, we had our regular meeting, did not have too many issues. We had a good month in the month of uh, uh, July that we're reporting. August has also been pretty good. Heat has not been a major factor. We've had some, but not to the amount that we normally get. So we've actually had a pretty good month as far as tournaments and play. Um, and the meeting went very smoothly. Uh, you have uh, the information in your board packet. If there's anything I can answer for you, I'd be happy to do that. Questions for Mark? I guess not, thank you. Okay. Now the uh, board committee reports, planning, Carl. Sorry about that. Yeah, we had a discussion and uh, part of what we felt was that the we discussed the uh, suggestion from the policy committee, and we felt <clears throat> that uh, that was not a planning issue. You mean the audit committee? The, the I mean, sorry, audit committee, and we felt that was not a planning uh, planning issue. <clears throat> we are moving forward in our next meeting, which everybody is welcome to, to discuss the projects in light of what we will potentially do in 2020, and you're all welcome to attend. Any questions for Carl? Okay, policy committee, Ken. Our committee had uh, two issues involved. One was the online um, privacy policy we'll be getting to in a moment. The other was the non-smoking policy, which is an ongoing uh, issue uh, with correspondence between us and uh, Walnut Creek. So now back to the online privacy policy. Um, do you want a motion at this time? No, this is just the first reading, so we're not uh, going to, so we're going to, if you can highlight the details of what changed or what we're doing, and then if there are questions from other board members. Um, but it's just uh, the first reading, so we won't be voting on it. Okay. Um, it's a rather technical issue. Anybody else want to speak on this um, privacy policy? The problem is that on the websites, when we go from from our our, our Rossmore website to an outside website, uh, the problem of confidentiality of personal information is involved and. Uh, we have to make it very clear as to that they are mo removing from our protection to somebody else's. And the basic solution, as I understand it at this point, is that we are offering or want to offer splash pages that will announce and, and inform them that they're going to an offsite and that they have their own uh, requirements and policies regarding uh, private information that may be collected. And uh, we need uh, to proceed on this with a, a motion. No, yeah, we don't. Oh, I'm sorry, that a reading. Do we have to read the whole thing? We don't no, want to read the no, whole thing. No, just the highlights at this point. So. Yeah. Uh, did I miss a highlight? Uh, any other? Tim. I can, I can say that the, um, Policy committee has worked on this for a number of months. It's been back and forth with the with our attorney. Our attorney actually wrote it. Um, they went back to the committee, negotiated some finer points. There were some questions and comments from some residents. There's, there was a, a number of people that have been fairly actively interested in this uh, in this policy. Um, so they've had shared their comments. Many of them were either addressed or were incorporated. Or an, you know, or answered. Um, there was questions about its applicability to other California state laws. 
So our attorneys advised us that uh, the current draft, or, which is for your consideration now as, as the policy that the policy committee approved, uh, meets all of the current standard, legal standards for the state of California. Um, there are, there, there is an, another body of laws and proposed amendments to the law currently being considered in Sacramento that if approved will change this. But it's premature for us to anticipate that those will pass. We don't know in their final form, you know, if, if they get amended or whatever. So it is probable that we will be revisiting this within a year. But we can't move forward with our web portal until, unless and until we have an online privacy policy. So just to be clear, we have a privacy policy that we've had for years, um, but that does not extend deep enough now because this whole new, this whole environment of web, um, you know, doing things over the internet for businesses requires a specific online privacy policy. So this is a brand new policy. We don't have this. We already have the regular privacy policy, but this is a, a vast expansion of the concept around pri resident privacy. So um, everything is, as I say, everything's been approved by the attorney, committee approved it, and it's for your consideration. This is the first reading. Any questions, Carl? Yes, that this deals with online, but on the other hand, we have some serious uh, privacy policy issues, such as uh, the trainers providing information to mind body. Now, is this online because they're using uh, iPads or whatever to put personal information in a uh, database that um, they say they can actually sell. And, you know, this policy bothers me. In fact, the whole fact that MindBody, from my understanding, was brought in to give us ideas on how to run the fitness center, I really personally believe it's time that we bring this whole thing in-house and have total control over the benefits that we provide our uh, residents and, you know, this also deals with the, you know, the Tice Valley uh, problem that we have right now that we have a completely separate uh, website that our residents have to use to provide GRF facilities and, you know, personally I feel this whole system is wrong. I think we need to bring this all in-house. Other questions or comments? Okay, I think there is a little confusion on the way this was written up that it implies we're going to vote on this and there'll be a motion. So I think in the, in the future, if we are doing a first reading of a policy, we should make clear that there's, uh, I mean, it does say first reading in here, but it, it it's almost like it was written that there'd be a motion and, and vote of it. So we might want to look at that just for uh, clarity in the future. So now we're moving on to the unfinished business, things we delayed from last month. And the current, uh, the, next, the first of that, those topics is the mission statement. Um, so we have a write-up, you have a write-up in your packet. Uh, there's been some modification of our mission statement. We have what's stated in the trust agreement. Uh, and then there was a change of that in the 1970, I guess. And the suggestion from staff is that we sort of move back to a more, um, I guess, a simple, uh, consistent with the trust agreement mission statement. Uh, and I think that now it's time to hear comments, suggestions. Mary? Um, so my theme today is going to be around um, having language in our mission, values, and vision around not just serving the current population, but being concerned about the future. So under the mission statement, uh, in 1970, the statement was changed. And what was added, I'll just read what it 
said, Golden Rain shall operate and manage the improvements and provide administrative, recreational, and medical services for the benefit of the members of the cooperatives and their successors in interest at cost and on a nonprofit basis. So in 1970, it talked about and their successors. So the proposed mission statement from staff, I would like to add the words and their successors so that it reads, the mission of GRF shall be to provide services and community facilities to the Rossmore Mutuals. GRF shall operate and manage the improvements, community facilities, streets, and other amenities, and provide administrative and recreational services for the benefit of the members of the Mutuals and their successors on a nonprofit basis. So we are acknowledging that uh, we're, we have both the short-term and the long-term perspective. Second. You should do that as a motion. Uh, it was yeah, a I, was that that was just a discussion it's a, just topic a discussion at this point? Yeah. A proposal. yeah, let's wait and uh, see if there are other suggestions or comments about this. Uh, Dale, I really respect some of the comments that were made at the resident forum this morning, and so I think that before we vote on this, we should put it off into next month, and in the meantime incorporate some of that verbiage into the recommendations that were made. I think that th those are, to be honest, are more appropriate in the, uh, the value statement. So I don't think the mission statement really should be addressing that. I mean, we have a, a very clear mission in our trust agreement, and I think it's, it's important that we, that we try to be consistent with that. But if I hear what other board members have to say. So Tim? So let me explain the genesis of this. The, um, so a Golden Rain Foundation is not just a typical corporation, a business a for-profit or even a non-profit business, a, a typical one that can define their mission statement however you want. The distinction is that Golden Rain Foundation is a trustee. The only reason Golden Rain Foundation exists is to, is to be the trustee of the trust. That's the only reason for its existence. Um, so uh, in conversations with our attorney, going back to the beginning of when I first came to work here, he pointed out to me the inconsistency with our mission statement. He said, you can't, you can't say that you do these other things that the trust agreement does not allow you to do. Now, there's nothing wrong with the things in the, in the mission statement that you find on the website right now, except that it's not consistent with the trust agreement. And the words that are not consistent, let me just pull it up here. It says, our mission is to maintain Rossmore as a premier adult community. Now the word premier is problematic, we'll, and we'll talk about that later, because that's not defined in the trust. In concert with the homeowners associations in which our members reside, that's consistent with the trust. And to provide services and facilities that enable our members to lead active, healthy, and purposeful lives. That last phrase, not part of the trust. There's nothing, there's no requirement that the Golden Rain Foundation in the trust agreement provides anything that leads to an active, healthy lifestyle for people who live here. And, and our attorney has said, a trustee can only do what it is um, mandated to do in the trust agreement. You can't go beyond that. So when I brought this to your attention at the retreat a couple months ago, um, this was the reason why. It, it's just that it, it, the current mission is not consistent with the trust agreement. And so it creates some problems now. You can create a vision statement with a V as opposed to a mission statement, and this current mission statement fits very nicely with one modification as a vision statement. So that's the, that's the proposals that we've got here for you to consider today, is to restate the mission statement so that it is very clear and consistent with the trust agreement, adopt a vision statement which does not currently exist, that would basically be the vision consistent with the current mission statement. And you can make that statement about leading active, healthy, and purposeful lives. And then adopting a statement of values, or I should say um, either validating the statement of values which currently exists or um, amending it, adopting it, including maybe some of the language that we heard today from some of the residents. So the first step I would encourage you 
They really should not stray far from the trust agreement. It can get you into trouble uh, later. Um, it should, the mission statement should very clearly mirror the requirement in the trust agreement. We don't have any latitude with that. It, and at, as Tony has advised, he has said that when a trustee deviates from its stated purpose, that's when you can get fired as the trustee, be removed as the trustee. The members could point that out, that you're, you're not acting in accordance with the trust agreement and you can be removed. So um, I think it's very important that our mission statement is mirrors the requirements of the trust. The vision, we can create however you want to create it, but the mission, though, has got to be specific and particular, relevant to the trust. Kathleen? Um, <clears throat> but I do agree with Mary that uh, a reference to the future, um, that would still be within the... Uh, I would put that... I, I would put that in the vision statement. Also? Yeah. Okay, but my experience being a trustee is you must think about the future as well as the here and now. And trustees have been removed because they aren't thinking about the future. They make short-term decisions and then things go wrong in the future. So when I looked up the word trustee about three years ago, it was very clear that it's, uh, it's not an in-the-moment role that you play. We're not trustees. So I don't think it contradicts the trust at all. I think it reinforces uh, really what the board ought to be doing. And in fact, in 1970, they put language into the mission. But I'll defer to you because I don't want to violate the trust. Oh, so let, let me re clarify. I, I thought you were asking me something slightly different. No, so your suggestion about the, the inclusion of the successors and in interest? Yes. I think that's fine. You okay. can, yeah. OK. Sorry, sorry. That's good, Tim. <laughs> Good. I was I was gonna I was gonna argue as well. I thought that what's wrong with that? Okay. So, Carl. Yes, I think that one of the things that society has changed since the '70s, when this was built, and I think it's important in our responsibility to the mutuals, and I believe the mutuals would agree that if necessary, a vision statement is what we want. I mean, the mission statement is how we get there, what we're going to do. And if our vision statement expresses values that aren't reflected in the trust, maybe it's time when we're considering making some minor changes to the trust anyway, such as extending it, that we may want to consider changes to the trust for things like, you know, actively seeking diversity, et cetera, and supporting it. It's, uh, you know, where we are in the 21st century is very different from where we were in the 20th century. And I certainly believe that, you know, if we have to go in front of the mutuals and say, we believe this is where we are in 2020, do you agree? And I really believe that the mutuals would support us on this and updating not only what we, what we, our vision statement, but our active participation in making this vision happen. So was that uh, volunteering for the trust um, <laughs> revision committee? I think so, Dale and then Sue. I think whatever verbiage we put in the mission statement must follow what our attorney recommends. Sue? Yes, uh, I have to tell you, I was in the President's Committee when they tried to alter a trust. You cannot get 19 presidents and, the, and Golden Rain to agree on almost anything. So the best we can do right now is to follow the rules of what a trustee is supposed to be and go by our attorney. I mean, I know that for a fact. Well, fortunately, we're not dealing with the trust amendment right now. So I think we might be ready for a motion. Can someone provide a motion for the uh, adopting the new mission statement? Mary. I'm going to read it again, I guess. Okay. I move that the new mission statement for GRF state the following. 
The mission of GRF shall be to provide services and community facilities to the Rossmore Mutuals. GRF shall operate and manage the improvements, parentheses, community facilities, streets, and other amenities, and provide administrative and recreational services for the benefit of the members of the Mutuals and their successors on a nonprofit basis. Okay, Sue so has seconded. Uh, any further discussion on this topic? Okay, all in favor of adopt. Oop. I kind of agree with moving forward, but I think we may want to revisit this at a future time. Okay. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, that passes unanimously. Now we're going to move to the vision statement. So the proposal from the staff for the vision statement is that our vision is to maintain Rossmore as a blank adult community in concert with the homeowners associations in which our members reside and to provide services and facilities that enable our members to lead active, healthy, and purposeful lives. So the blank is a word that has, it was premier in there, and that was uh, in the existing, I guess, uh, mission statement, and that's created problems we've heard for the staff. So one of our tasks is to come up with a different word for that. Another task is to see if this is the place that we want to add some of the words that we heard um, concerns about today. And I would also suggest that maybe, I, I don't quite understand why we're using homeowners associations here when we're using mutuals and everybody calls them mutuals. So I guess I would, unless there's some legal reason, I would propose that we change that to mutuals. So let's just take them in order. Um, so we've heard that premier, when staff goes out to get quotes on things, if you're the premier uh, adult community, then you're gonna want the best of everything. And yet we put them on a budget a tight budget and so they can't always ask for that and it creates confusion. So what we're gonna look for is a, an alternative word that still communicates that we think this is a great place, that this is a leading uh, adult community, um, but something that makes sense in there. Um, I thought outstanding might work uh, as a, an outstanding and then add the word innovative, since that's what we're trying to do it looks like with our solar and autonomous vehicles and, and things, but I'm open to, let's discuss Kev, uh, Ken and then uh, Les. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of confused on the word premier. Does that particular word require a legal obligation of our staff to look for the most expensive options or whatnot? Why is that one word uh, objectionable? To me, it's a, I like the word outstanding too, but what's the difference? Is there a legal obligation when we use that one word? There's no legal obligation, but Tim, why don't you uh, weigh in on this? Yeah, it, there, there's no legal ob obligation, but the, the challenge has been that um, if you're holding this as a standard, uh, so premier, which is not defined, it's whatever you know people interpret it to be, <clears throat> but when we have traditionally gone out and spec'd carpeting, for example, do you want a premier carpet? Because the prices can be three times what a basic or more. So how, you know, it's, it's confusing for the staff. And then when we've brought, say, bids for carpet or the, the caliber of a contractor who might be a higher end that's going to do a higher end quality work, those bids are always rejected. They're never included. So I mean, we go out and get them, but the, those bidders never get the business. So it becomes problematic for us to even get them to come back a, a second or a third or a fifth or a tenth time to continue to bid when they know they're never going to get the business. So the, the word premier, for that reason, staff has had difficulty operationalizing that language. And okay. if, if we change the word premier to outstanding, is the staff then going to go look for outstanding carpeting? I don't, I don't get the difference. Yeah. Mary. Uh, oh, uh, so Ken, you to your point. Okay. Um, okay. I looked up definitions. Sure. So the definition of outstanding is ranking first. Is what? Ranking first. So if 
So in terms of bidding, if you say outstanding, I don't know that we've fixed the problem of Premier. You know, they're, right? I'm agreeing with you. The so if the word is Premier and we go out to bid, we get the expensive solution. If we use the word outstanding, which means ranking first, I think we're still going to get the expensive bid. So I don't think we solved the problem, is my point. Les. I would suggest we change the word premier to inclusive. <laughs> well, I think at this point, I would prefer, I think what we're trying to communicate here is, I think I'm not opposed to adding that as an additional thing, but I think we want to uh, somehow indicate at this part of the uh, statement, the vision statement, that we, we consider ourselves better than mediocre. <laughs> so okay, so we got Carl, Dale, and then Kathleen. How about prestigious? Prestigious? Is that prestigious? Is that the suggestion? Yeah. Same thing. I think you can do it. Okay, Dale. How about responsible? Rossmore as a responsible adult community. Okay, Kathleen. Yeah, other things, that were, uh, oh, excuse. other things that were suggested before were leading, preeminent, outstanding, uncommon, and attractive. So leading, preeminent, outstanding all have the same problem as premier, but we are attractive. Yep. So I think attractive is a pretty safe, and it could be, it could read, uh, maintain Rossmore as a attractive, inclusive um, adult community. Okay, Ken. I, I, really, I really like the word inclusive, but I think it belongs uh, at the next uh, vision statement of our values. I think it needs its own space, its own emphasis, its own uh, priority here. Well, I think what we're trying to say is that, that Rossmore is an excellent, a premier, an outstanding, a wonderful uh, community, something way above average, like Bob said. That's the, and I think the idea of inclusiveness should come under its own category later. Okay, so, Les. Can't you say inclusive in more than one place? Well, right here, what we're trying to do, though, is define this as better than average. I think it, we can discuss whether to include it in the vision statement later on, but right now I want a word that deals with how we want to be perceived as far as premier or attractive, whatever. Carl. Yes, yeah, so one of the reasons I was thinking of prestigious, if you look at the definition, it is a reputation or inference arising from success, achievement, rank, or other favorable at attributes, which sort of puts it in the fact that we are above, we are not a luxury, we are not committed to be anything other than the fact that we are, you know, above average. We have certain aspects of us that put us above others, but we're not claiming to be king of the mountain. Mary. So I kind of like the word prestigious. When I think about going out to bid with the word prestigious, it doesn't say we want the most expensive solution. It's, it, it says we make good decisions, mm -hmm. you know. Give us value for what we're buying. So it, it gets us, um, it perhaps clarifies the bidding process, which was one of the reasons we're replacing Premier. So I could live with prestigious. I can live with attractive. Ken. I like the word excellent. It's vague enough and yet strong enough to suffice. Excellent. Dale? What's it mean? No? Okay. Ken, Tim. Uh, another idea. So I, I kind of, as, as I think this through, Carl, prestigious kind of, to me, creates the same issue as Premier. For example, uh, we have to go and replace these chairs soon, some of these chairs, uh, the event center and the fireside room. They're very expensive. So when we go out and get a quote, does prestigious mean that we're going to put the Rossmore logo em embroidered in the, in the backing? I mean, that would be prestigious. Um, so maybe that word creates the same issue that Premier does. 
so perhaps uh, desirable, just as another adjective you haven't used yet that you might want to consider. Carl? Yes, I don't think, I don't think it, it means that we're top, but we take the time to consider, you know, are these chairs going to be adequate for people? We just don't go out and buy them. We, we take care for the people to make sure that we are doing right by them. And we have, in a sense, prestigious also says, we have a, a success story in actually doing what we're committing to do. Dale? I like the word desirable, Tim. Desirable has a good feeling to me. It means people want, want good. And, and if the chairs, if, unless the chair, this is going to be a chair that has my name on it, Tim, I would uh, say we don't do that. <laughs> okay, Sue. Um, do we have anybody in staff here that would like to say something about this? The whole thing was about it was confusing staff. I, you know, not many of you guys are here, but <laughs> thanks, Jeff. So to me, this isn't really about contracting or it's about the level of service and the image you want to display to the community and to the outside. And that has to do with what level of service you're providing, what level of facilities you're providing, how you're maintaining things, how you're providing services. So if you talk about Premier and then you fund at a different level, you're not meeting the standard of Premier. So if you want to look at a different word, like uh, Dale just mentioned, it, it may give a different image of what you're trying to project. So while you're up there, don't leave. Um, do you, so, so far we have one, two, three, four, five words. Um, I don't think desirable is gonna be a problem with that. I don't think responsible, attractive, or so the two words that might create those issues would be excellent and prestigious. Do you see either of those as creating the same problem, or how do you feel about that? I think desirable is a, a good image for, for people and level of what you're trying to project. Um, it's not really what we put into a, a bid or anything like that, or what people provide us bids for, and that has nothing to do with it. It's, it's just what image you're right. projecting. Right, no, but so I'm, I'm asking about the level of service concern you had. Do you think prestigious causes the same? It's a similar word. I, I think desirable premier? is a, a safer word. So. Okay, and what about uh, excellent? Do you think that gives you a heartburn for level of service? Um, no, I don't think that gives me heartburn. I think we provide excellent service. Okay, good. I think Premier is top of the line imagery. And does prestigious uh, say, uh, offer uh, give you that same image? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's pretty top of the line sounding to me. Okay, thank you. Okay. Barbara. Could we use both, both words, um, excellent and desirable? Or do they? Yeah, no, we could, I mean, since we're talking about, the, at this point, we certainly could. Um, let's, at this point, unless there are other discussions, suggestions, let's just go down. I think we've, it's, it seems like, well, let's just go through these five words and, and do a, a straw vote on on them, and then we'll, we'll sort of. Tim. I have more than five on my list. What do you have? I have outstanding. Well, I, that's been taken off the table, so. Right. Inclusive, <laughs> prestigious, responsible, leading, attractive, inclusive, excellent, and desirable. Well, I've taken inclusive off the table because at this point we're talking about this aspect of it. So I've got desirable, prestigious, responsible, attractive, and excellent. Is there something I'm missing if you don't? No. Okay, so leading. So again, I had out, the one the words I had heard people say were outstanding, inclusive, prestigious, responsible, leading, attractive, inclusive, excellent, and desirable. And, and you're saying we've taken outstanding and, and inclusive off, right? 
Okay. Okay. So leading, we have not had any discussion about that. Doesn't that sort of, if you're leading, doesn't that mean you're first yes. position? So doesn't it sort of create the same problem? So maybe we should take that off. Now, what do people feel about, I guess we'll just do a, a, a vote uh, hand raise before we get to any kind of motion or anything. So, so the ones we're gonna be considering, now we could add, as Barbara suggested, we could mix these, but let's see what people feel about these words and see if we can eliminate some of them. Uh, desirable, uh, who thinks desirable is a good? So we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, prestigious, one. Responsible, okay, zero. Attractive, one, two, three, four, five. Excellent, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we're gonna... I I'm sorry, but uh, I still don't think you should take inclusive off the list. But we're going to talk about adding it later. It, it is, to me, it is a vision. Um, I, I agree. No, no, I'm saying in the vision statement later on, we're going to talk about it. I thought this was the vision no, statement. No, no. This is the first sentence of the vision statement. We have other sentences to discuss in the vision statement. That's what I'm proposing. Yeah. So you've got okay. two board members. I think we should, uh, cons we can consider it in another sentence, but I think we should not rule it out. Okay. Being in here also. And our vision is just one sentence at this point. Okay, well, I meant okay. part of the sentence then. Okay, so you're trying to replace one word. I'm trying to replace premier okay. at this point. Okay, so if people want to, uh, who, who feels that inclusive should be replaced premier here? Let's see a raise of hands. One, okay. So what we have is attractive at five, excellent at four, and desirable at four. So attractive, does that, is everyone happy if we put attractive in this part of the vision statement? So we would say our vision is to maintain Rossmore as an attractive adult community in concert with, we'll deal with the other later. Are people happy with that? Does that sound okay to them? Mary. I'm happy with it. I looked up the definition, appealing to the senses, having beneficial qualities or features that induce someone to accept what is being offered. So I think, I think it's good. Okay. Okay, good. So we're going to put, I mean, uh, <laughs> attractive there. Sorry. Okay. Now what about the homeowners association? Is there some reason we have that here instead of mutuals? Tim, do you know? Do you have any problem with removing that or replacing that with mutuals? Okay, Kathleen. Um, if this is uh, on the website, uh, nobody but people who live here know what a mutual is. So I think it should remain homeowners association because the rest of the world knows what that is. But the mission statement that we just approved talked about mutuals. Because it so, has to be with the trust. Yeah, That's right. That's the trust. But. It, What's more important for the people who don't live here or the people that live here as far as the vision statement? Well, I think the, the, when, the, when people are considering moving here and they look and they look at the vision statement, they won't know what it means if it's a mutual. Okay. So let's just see a show of hands then. Oh, sure. Sorry. We got a bunch of people here. I'm not looking the right way. Sue and then Carl and then Dale. Uh, when I tell people when I'm showing this place that they're called mutuals, but you can put mutuals, and then in parentheses, i.e. homeowners association, it gives you both consistent with the product and what it is. Okay, Carl. That's what I was going to say. Dale? I was going to say mutuals slash homeowners association, so that they're synonymous. Great. That okay. makes them synonymous. I think that, how about that as a solution then? Mutuals, parentheses, or slash homeowners association. Does everyone feel okay about that? Okay. Okay, good. 
Now let's see, do we want to add, okay, so now we're saying our vision is to maintain Rossmore as an attractive adult community in concert with the mutual slash homeowner associations in which our members reside and to provide services and facilities that enable our members to lead active, healthy, and purposeful lives. Uh, we can add another sentence or we could modify that last phrase. Carl and then Ken. Yes, I think we could say comma inclusive and that would fit in Attractive, and it wouldn't comma. make it much longer. Comma where? Uh, after comma. Uh, attractive, comma, inclusive. Okay. Adult. Okay. Um, Ken, and then. Yeah, I'm going to repeat. I don't like the word attractive. I think it's too weak. It's uh, uh, eh, it's kind of middling and whatnot. That, that, I think ship, the is word, that ship is sailed. That ship is sailed. We no, already it's had not a vote over. on this. This is a strong. Well, vote. we haven't done. Okay. But go ahead. We, I'm we, just going to make my point that <laughs> I think desirable or excellent are much stronger words. Okay. So, Barbara. I hope I'm in the right place. Um, where it says environmentally sensitive. No, no, that's I'm values. Not there yet. No, you're, that's values. values. Okay. Okay, Kathleen. I think if you add the word um, uh, inclusive w with uh, attractive, that it makes it a little stronger, the, the, two co the combination of those two. So I, I like it with, an, with a comma, like was suggested. It uh, can go either way. It can be an inclusive, attractive adult community or uh, an attractive, uh, comma, inclusive adult community. Okay, and I've, I did forget that Barbara had suggested combining two words here also, which would be uh, attractive and excellent, but I, I don't know, are you still in favor of that? Yeah. Okay. Carl and Sue. I, I, like, I kind of go along with Ken. I like desirable better than attractive. Sue. Um, we don't have to use the comma. We can say attractive and inclusive, because I've heard you say and a couple of times when you're talking about Dublin, so uh, I think it's just as easy. Okay. So, um, People prefer that to uh, adding a phrase then, that seems like. So I guess at this point, there seem to be some people not happy with uh, attractive, but if a number of people are, are, if five people are unhappy with that, or I guess the best thing to do at this point is get a motion, and if it doesn't pass, then we'll go back and address the, the words. Ken? One have a straw vote. One have a straw vote between those two words only. Okay, let's do that then. So, going back to the first, so now it would be in uh, conjunction. It seems that we have agreement that uh, inclusive is a good word to add after either attractive or desirable here. So, does that seem to be agreed upon? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back and we'll just go back down to desirable. We'll, we're going to choose between desirable and attractive. So all those who think desirable is the appropriate word, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. I went over on there. Yeah, I got Barbara. <coughs> so there's five. Okay, all those who think um, attractive is, what did I, I just said desirable, right? You said desirable. Okay, all those who think attractive is the appropriate word, raise your hand. So we got one, two, three, four. Okay, it looks like desirable wins. Okay, so at this point where we are is our vision is to maintain Rossmore as a desirable, inclusive, and inclusive or desirable. I think comma is better than and myself, but is our vision is to maintain Rossmore as a desirable, inclusive adult community in concert with the mutual slash homeowner associations in which our members reside and to provide services and facilities that enable our members to lead active, healthy, and purposeful lives. So moved. <laughs> Ready to move on, okay. Okay, any other further discussion? Ken. Don't say you don't like the desirable. <laughs> Grammar-wise, I think we need either a comma or the word and between the word desirable and inclusive. Yeah, I, I suggested comma. 
that was part of. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just whoever knows grammar, probably Paulette knows it Paulette better than knows. you. How about inclusive or desirable and inclusive? Or because they're two different things. Okay. That's, That's there's it. a decision made. Okay. Any other comments, discussion? Yep. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you waited to raise your hand. Okay. Uh, all opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Sorry about that, Dale. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, you were voting? Oh, okay. Good, good. I'm glad I didn't miss a comment then. Okay, now we're going to go to statement of values. So what we currently have is to achieve our mission, we will endeavor, one, to maintain Rossmore as a safe, secure, stable, attractive, environmentally sensitive, and inclusive community. Two, or not numbered, but bullet point two, to provide our members with a wide choice of healthy and stimulating activities with attractive and supporting facilities and sound infrastructure, to be sensitive to the challenges of, now it says the, age, the aging, but I, I think we should work on that, to foster transparent, fiscally responsible, representative self-governance, to treat our members, staff, homeowners associations, and I would suggest slash mutuals or mutual slash homeowners associations here also, suppliers and neighbors with respect and integrity to support our homeowners associations, again, mutuals slash homeowners associations, to be responsive to the changing needs of our residents and the world around us. So let's just go down the list. So. To achieve our mission, we will endeavor to maintain Rossmore as a safe, secure, stable, attractive, environmentally sensitive, and inclusive community. So comments on that phrase. Ken, and then Barbara. Uh, whereas the whole concept of inclusiveness seems to be of such importance to our residents and our board members, I said, I, I, uh, would like to move that we remove the word in that first sentence, inclusive community, delete that, and include it under its own heading, the next bullet, uh, to something to this effect, to provide a diverse and inclusive community with all persons in Rossmore entitled to the full and equal accommodations, advantages, facilities, privileges, or services in all organizations and matter of every kind whatsoever. This is taking from the language from the UNRU uh, Civil Rights Act of 1959, basically, very, very briefly summarized. And that grabs the whole concept of inclusiveness, I think, which I think it deserves its own space. Barbara. Want that as a motion? Or? Uh, not, we're just doing general discussion right now, so. I, I agree with Ken on that, that it should be a separate one, maybe not as wordy as that. Um, I also would like to see environmentally sensitive change to environmentally sustainable. I, I don't think sensitive is strong enough for me. Uh, I, okay, uh, let's talk about um, Ken's comment. Okay, so it seems like is there interest in r making the inclusive aspect of this its own separate bullet point? Let's show a raise of hands who would like to do that. Okay, so we're gonna take that out of there and make that its own bullet point. So let's talk about then environmentally sensitive. I'm a little concerned about what sustainable means to different people, I guess. Yes. Uh, my concern is that one could say, you're not sustainable unless you, I mean really sustainability, what, what do you envision with that as a, is the definition. How would you implement that? What? what comes to mind first is that we use our resources in a way that they are sustaining and so we're not using them up. Les. You know, the, the uh, residents of Rossmore are in different 
levels of sustainability right now. Uh, there is the sustainable group, which you, you belong to, that believes that we're not doing enough for sustainability. There are residents that say, oh my God, now we're doing something else, so we're doing too much. Uh, I think to talk about it as environmentally sensitive is more along the lines of the general population. I would hate to have us put in that we are enviro excuse me, environmentally sustainable because there are many that would say we are not. And uh, I would hate to think that we had, are forced into something that some people aren't interested in. Barbara, were you gonna? Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, they need to be sustainable. <laughs> It's just a need, and I think we need to lead the way. Um, what would you, I just thought of another word and I forgot it. Uh, responsible? Yeah, responsible. You like that? Yeah, I, I actually, I like pr responsible better than sustainable myself because I'm concerned that, you know, we use gas, we, we're not sustainable in that sense, and I would hate someone to take this and say, well, you're not being sustainable in the fuel you're using even though we are going to be considering alternatives, we're not there yet. And I, I'm concerned that, that if we're gonna say we wanna be something, then we have to live that. Okay, Barbara and then Kathleen. Um, I think we have to think of, I wanna think of me leading the way. And so maybe you're not using less gas now, but I want you to think about trying to use less gas. But I'm, I really like responsible instead of sustainable. I'm ready to drop sustainable. Okay, Kathleen. Um, I, I think um, we want to have it so we're working toward yes. environmentally responsibility. Or um, so do we want to change it to instead of saying that we will maintain Rossmore as environmentally responsible because it's not at this point that we want to word it as working toward or some other yeah. way to say that. Well, again, though, my concern is that if we said that, then why aren't we getting rid of our gas vehicles right now? Because it's cheaper to use gas now, and people are concerned about the coupon as well. So I'm, I'm just concerned. I mean, I've been an environmentalist since 1971, yeah. so I'm, I'm definitely... Uh, for moving in that direction. I just don't want to put something in here that people are going to say we're not living up to. And I'm concerned that if we, if we make statements in here that we are not ready because of fiscal considerations or other, that we're going to be in trouble. Carl and then Dale. Yes, I think sensitive is actually a broader term. I think if we do something like add proactive, it would show a deeper commitment to this other than just being sensitive that we are actually acting. We have a, a commitment to act on environmental issues. So I think if we put something like proactively environmentally sensitive or something to that effect, that would be both broader and deepen our commitment. Dale? I, I like uh, environmentally sensitive and responsible using both of those words. Okay. Um, Kathleen. Or, or, or um, as Carl was saying, environmentally active. Well, again, that's... Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure I'm, about proactive, but environmentally active. Well, that also we're... active. It would cover such a wide range that I'm concerned about that. Yeah. Um, Responsible sounds good. So sensitive and responsible, I don't, yeah, that may cover a wider. What about, um, let's table that for just a second. What about stable? What does stable I mean to people? What do we want? I mean, we're, we're not talking about fiscally, I don't think, because down below, don't we talk about fiscally responsible? So safe, secure, stable, what does that mean to people? Dale? Carl? That for me, it's like balance. So Being balanced. That, seem, that seems appropriate in here? I, I think so. Carl? Yes, I think 
One of the things that bothers me about stable and bothers me about this is I don't think there's any commitment to look into being, uh, looking at future, looking at changes, being progressive. Maybe progressive might have some political implications, but I think w there's nothing in here to say, you know, we won't be keeping up with the times. Well, but that's what our goals and objectives are for that we set each year. These are the, the values that are sort of engraved on the front wall and to live up to those then and to move forward, I think those are where the goals and objectives are. But yeah, so but I, you, I think this kind of, you know, moving forward in that, I think kind of fits in here somewhere and I don't see it. Okay, well, Mary? Um, Carl, what do you think about the last bullet there? <laughs> where it says to be responsive to the changing needs of our residents and to the world around us. Maybe the thought there was um, to be progressive and to be looking at you know, how we need to change. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I'm also not sure what, what the word stable <clears throat> meant. When I read this, like when I wanted to add the word successors to the mission, what was, I didn't see stated here clearly in the values is something about uh, sustainability in the broadest sense. So that's probably not the right word, but sustainable environmentally, economically, and socially. Uh, and it really, do we have a value um, that says we are uh, focusing on the short term as well as the long term? I just never got around to writing the bullet that might say that. Well, I think to being responsive to the changing needs sort of addresses some of yeah. that. Um, so do we want to leave stable in, oh, Ken? <clears throat> I like the word stable, and I think a lot of elderly people who, who live here or are looking to buy here will also like that. And also in political theory, stability is very important. Change is important only in a stable environment. If there's too much uh, change, that's chaos and... Okay. and so forth. The stability represents, will, it will only make, will make change meaningful. Okay, that makes, that makes a certain amount of, that makes sense to me. Okay. What about adding innovative? Oh, I like that. Ooh, I like that. And you thought there was going to be a short meeting? I did, I know, I made a mistake. Yeah. Carl. Yes, I'm, I'm almost like Mary's idea of maybe changing stable to sustainable, which means we will keep essentially those pieces of what we do supportive of, but on the other hand, we won't be stagnant. Well, let's deal with that in the last bullet because I think that's more to the that topic. Um, all right, so. Let's see a show of hands of who would like to leave stable in. Whoops, we have more comments. This is okay. So we're going to leave stable in. We're not finished with this yet. So, Kathleen, go ahead. Uh, well, since we're sort of scrutinizing all the words, um, what is the difference between safe and secure? Do we need both of them? If we're adding uh, additional words, maybe we safe and secure both mean the same thing. They don't mean the same thing. Okay, Les, you have a comment. But they don't mean the same thing to me. What do they mean differently to you? Well, safe means that you're not in any danger of anything, and secure means that you uh, can feel safe, but I think it still, it, it adds, each of those add a something that's meaningful. Mary? Uh, so maybe uh, safe means uh, we fix the roads and we do a traffic study and those sorts of things. And secure means uh, more around uh, having whole securitas here and a gate and some of those aspects. Well, I know that's the most, uh, as Tim has mentioned many times, it's the most uh, popular or most common complaint and, com and concern. So repeating it isn't necessarily a bad thing probably. Tim? So a few um, days ago, <clears throat> we um, received a notice from an attorney from a resident who claims that she had her house broken into and had a half million dollars of jewelry stolen. 
And so the, the attorney, her attorney, was demanding from the Mutual and from Golden Rain Foundation that we pay them several hundred thousand dollars. So our attorney has responded and said that, you know, the, the mut we, don't, we don't govern the homeowners, the living units, so um, telling the attorney that you're kind of barking up the wrong tree, you deal with the mutual. The mutual is, attorney has responded and is denying the claim. So it'll likely end up in litigation. The response from their attorney was that um, you, on your website, you represent that you're a secure community. So I would like to suggest that we remove the word secure because we don't want to convey to anybody that this is a secure community. Yeah. It is not. Our gate is not a, com a complete barricade. It's basically an open gate that prevents vehicles from coming through, but not pedestrians, not motorcycles, not bicycles. Um, so I, I would say that we, you know, we're, we don't feel we have any liability around this at all. We're not even sure she, the, the resident hasn't demonstrated that she actually has purchased the stuff that she claims was stolen. Um, there was no evidence of a break-in, by the way. Securitas went, there was no, no sign of breakage or anything. Police were there, police investigated the whole thing. So it, it, we don't know the legitimacy of the claim, but it, it, we don't feel it's applicable to the Gold Rain Foundation. But we don't want to give people the perception that this is a completely secure community, because it is not. So are we going to be putting ourselves in legal liability if we go and remove this now after this attorney has claimed this? And they're going to say, well, look, they've removed this secure, and they had it there before. I, I can't answer that. That's a question of the other side. But I needed to say this to you now. I would have preferred to say it in an executive session, but we're here you're voting on this language right now, I think that um, our attorney, who is aware of the language that we have on the website, has said he still maintains that we do not have liability for this. But we should be careful about representing that we're secure, because it's not a secure community. Well, or we're not guaranteeing security. Anyway, we are more secure than the city, which has been told to us by the police many times. So what we have is public safety services, is what we have. So we have Securitas that mans, staffs the gate, that responds to, you know, as you know, for various reasons in the community, but they don't, they can't investigate a crime. They're not, you know, the police department. That's the role of the police departments. But we've been told many times that there are fewer crimes here than the rest of this, the city, so, okay. Well, where is it in the, uh, on the website? In, in what portion? It was in a couple of places. This is one of them. Statement, okay. of, uh, Statement of Values is on the website, but there were a couple other places which we have since removed but I can't remove this one because you have to vote on the language. Carl? Yes, so, uh, so we're assuming then that safe is a relative term and secure is an absolute term? In, in the mind of that attorney, that's how they were interpreting the word secure. Okay, so since you've already removed it other places, then I'm not gonna worry about removing it from here. So uh, let's have a straw vote. Raise your hand about removing secure. Who's in favor of removing secure from this? Okay, we're gonna remove secure. So here's where we are at this point. To maintain a safe, stable, attractive, innovative, environmental, environmentally sensitive and responsible community. Do we feel good about that, good. Kathleen? The responsible on the end doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's going along with the environmentally. No, re environmentally sensitive and responsible. But it sounds like responsible connected. is like we're a responsible community, not okay, that well, we're how environmentally would you, responsible. How would you say, um, environmentally responsible and environmentally sensitive? Put environmentally in front of both of them? or just use one of them. Yeah. Okay. I would remove responsible. Let's have a straw vote on, I first of all, whether we should have both words in there or not. A straw vote on whether, um, inclu including both words. Who's in favor of having environmentally sensitive and responsible in there? Two people, three people. Okay, so we'll have one word. Who's in favor of environmentally sensitive? 
One, two, three. Okay, who's in favor of environmentally responsible? Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's gonna be environmentally responsible at this point. Okay. I'm responsible for my It is difficult wordsmithing something in public here with my people. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna be dealing with the uh, separate bullet point of inclusive. I suggest that we have inclusive and diverse in there. I am not in favor. I think Ken's suggestion is way too wordy, but let's have a, a straw vote on whether we should uh, include, read your comment again, Ken, your bullet point. Where it's quote, your quote from the Unreal. Subject to modification or well, go ahead and read it, though, and we'll take a straw vote and see what other people think. Yeah, yep. Uh, again, this may this may be too wordy, but it is from the uh, Unruh Civil Rights Act. To provide a diverse and inclusive community with all persons in Rossmore entitled to the full and equal accommodations, advantages, facilities, privileges, or services in all organizations and matters of every kind whatsoever. That's the legal language of California. Okay, so our, who would be in favor of include, let's just straw vote again, in, including that language as just stated. Raise your hand. But could we talk about it for a minute? Well, the, if we were gonna include that, then if everyone was in favor, then, but okay, go ahead, let's talk about it. So, uh, because uh, Tim mentioned lawyers, when you were reading that, I, I was thinking that if we put that, all of that in there, I'm in favor of the diverse and inclusive separate bullet, but some of that language, I can see that some of our residents may feel that we are not acknowledging um, their particular issues. I'm thinking particularly of ADA compliant bathrooms and all sorts of other things. So I think the diverse and inclusive is important, but maybe we have to remember that we have lawyers out there and if we're putting this stuff up on the website, we don't wanna create any more reason for them to sue us. Carl and then Dale. Yes, I like the beginning of that if we just drop the end. Because the other is more of an action thing. The first part of that really deals with values. And I think the second part is talking about actions. And if we drop the second part, I think we can rephrase the first part. Dale and then Ken. We're not responsible for organizations. Okay. As, as, as GRF. <clears throat> Ken? I agree with it, kind of Carl. You could just simply say, and it might be more appropriate as a, as a uh, value, simply to say to provide a diverse and inclusive community with all persons in Rossmore, period. I, I guess I don't understand the uh, with all persons. It seems to me it should be diverse and inclusive community. Uh, what does the all persons add to it? I mean, it's... Otherwise, I guess that someone could, never mind. <laughs> Less. I, I know, I was gonna say that, but then I figured that was not appropriate. <laughs> You've done it anyway, Less. It strikes me that we can accomplish the same thing with the first bullet that we include uh, in that diverse and inclusive community. It, it, only word that he is reading that is missing on what we have is the word diverse. Yeah, I think the idea was that by having a separate bullet, it in, in, in emphasizes it and that people were in favor of doing that. So, Barbara. I wonder if it's possible to have something in there about not, tol not tolerating intolerance. In other words, making a little bit stronger than just diverse and inclusive, but yeah, that's my concern. I know it's hard, but what they're saying if you state that as a one of your statement of values and then if you're not if someone says this happened, you say you're not going to tolerate it, what is it? Right. I mean it again, it's sort of like in, sustainable to me. Uh, but do people what do people feel about that, Sue? Well, you can't enforce it. It's just, we don't have a police force here in security, so you can't put anything too strong because we can't, you know, can't enforce it. 
only the mutuals can find people and residents and things. So I wouldn't do. I wouldn't get too strong. Dale. Yeah, we're setting forth forth expectations. This is what we expect, and this is yeah we expect. Uh, in I mean, we expect tolerance. Uh, Kathleen. I think we should just keep it simple, have that first part of it, and uh, let's move, you know, let's decide on that. And um, I think we'll all be okay with that. Okay, so you want to read the first part of that again then, Ken? No, don't To say provide that. a diverse and inclusive community with all persons in Rossmore, period. Okay, I'm still thinking we should take out with all persons, but let's do a straw vote on who should, who thinks we should keep in with all persons. Raise your hand. One. Okay, three. Read it without. What is the alternative? Read it without with all persons. To provide to provide a diverse and inclusive community. Okay, that's the alternative. Who's in favor of that? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, that's okay. Okay, so we're going to create a second bullet point that is to create a diverse and inclusive. Was that the order or was it inclusive? To provide was the word. To provide? A diverse and okay. inclusive. Okay. To provide. Okay, okay. To provide. To provide a diverse and inclusive okay. community. Community. Okay, Dale. The thought just occurred to me, if we are promising to provide it, it, we want to encourage it, but if we promise to provide it and we don't in a given situation, then where does that leave us? Good point. Any comment, Kathleen? Yeah, I agree. It, it should be to encourage. Okay. Uh, people, Carl. Oh, we could go one step further and say promote. Oh. I think that's a little stronger, but it doesn't commit us to anything. It just means we will take action. Like we commit things. as a board to take actions to do this, but you know, we don't guarantee anything. Ken, then less. Yeah, I, I like that idea to change uh, promote, uh, provide to promote. It seems much more stronger and active. And also, when you say you provide a diverse, you don't say how much. There's no legal requirement to maintain a, a certain degree or, or whatnot. I don't think that makes this liable. Okay, Les? I'm, <laughs> I'm concerned about promote. That means we change all of our documents and say that we are promoting a diverse society. If we put it as that's one of our values, I, to me that is about as much as this board can do. I, I don't see how we are going to promote. And I'd like to go back and think that we don't need a second bullet if we, if we do uh, di include the diverse. Okay. Um, I thought we had done a straw vote on a separate bullet. But you did. We did do that. Okay. I just Dale? Disagreed. Okay. Maybe we need to encourage instead of promote. That's a good suggestion. <laughs> okay. Any other comments before we? Okay. So we're going to do a straw vote on promote and encourage. So all in favor of promote, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. All those in favor of encourage. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So it's going to be. The new bullet point is to encourage a diverse and inclusive community. All right, the next bullet point, to provide our members with a wide choice of healthy and stimulating activities with attractive and supporting facilities and sound infrastructure. Amen. Anyone have any problem with that bullet point? Okay, good. To be sensitive to the challenges, it says, of the aging. I don't like the wording myself. I would say something different, but any... What do people think about that? Is that this end of the sentence? How about to be sensitive to the challenges of aging in place or? Of just aging. Of aging, <laughs> okay, of aging. Okay, does that seem to be, to be sensitive to the challenges of aging? Yes. 
Okay, no vote on that. To foster transparent, fiscally responsible, representative self-governance. Any problems, suggestions? Okay. To, yep, Dale? No, except that there should be, it should be self-governance. <laughs> Good, I'm glad we have an ex-English teacher here or play, playing one on the board anyway. To treat our members, staff, mutual slash homeowners associations, suppliers, and neighbors with respect and integrity. Any suggestions, changes? No, okay. To support our mutual slash homeowners associations. Any problem with that? Okay. Now the last one, to be responsive to the changing needs of our residents and to the world around us. There were some thoughts around that. Mary, did that? There were some concerns you had earlier. No, not concerns. I just, or a uh, yeah, I was uh, in response to Carl, uh, Carl's comment about recognizing the need that we need to change. So I think that bullet does it for me. It's, it's okay. Uh, I don't know how the rest of you feel. Dale? What's included in the world around us? Well, I, I, pretty much everything outside of Rossmore. <laughs> I would say. The planet. The planet around us, we could say. Um, the universe. Why do you? I, well, I think it in terms of, of, of the communities that's just the way I feel when I say that. When I think of this, it's be sensitive to the environment here that, that may affect us or we may affect them or, or the interactions. World just throws it completely out for me. Well, you could make a suggestion and we could Yeah, Do you can't just, can just complain here. This is an, <laughs> we're expecting action. Well, my think mic, about it. Think about it while Carl. My mic, my mic is going dead. <laughs> okay, Carl. Yes, I think there's also another interpretation of world, where it is to the degree that the outside environment affects you. In other words, a person's world can be very narrow. A person's world can be wide. And it generally means that things that are close to them, et cetera, affect them more than things that may be distant. So I think world works. Okay. Anyone else have comments on this? Um, Ken. I, I agree with Carl. I, I think that none of us sit in isolation and what happens in the world around us it directly affects us and we should keep on that in mind as we seek to uh, help our aging neighbors. Not us, right, though. Yeah. Just, our, just our neighbors are uh, aging. I'm, I'm thinking of the recent approval of this uh, experiment to bring on uh, uh, cognitive improvement testing here in Rossmore, for example. Okay, so does that mean that people are generally happy with this statement as it stands? Yes. Or you're just getting tired and want to go and have lunch? <laughs> okay. Okay. So I think we have a new statement of values with some improvements. So let's have a motion that we... Uh... Did you write all that down? Oh, Tim. Okay. Okay, so I, I don't trust myself. I thought I had it all, but I don't trust myself. So I'm going to ask Deborah to read back our new statement of values. They are to achieve our mission, we will endeavor to maintain Rossmore as a safe, stable, attractive, innovative, environmentally responsible, and to encourage a diverse and inclusive community. On the first one, it should be. Uh, community. There should be community at, at the end of the first bullet. And then community in, in, in the second bullet also. So responsible community? Right. Okay. So that is to maintain Rossmore as a safe, stable, attractive, innovative, environmentally responsible community and to encourage a diverse and inclusive community. 
to provide our members with a wide choice of healthy and stimulating activities with attractive and supporting facilities and sound infrastructure, to be sensitive to the challenges of aging, to foster transparent, fiscally responsible, representative self-governance with a hyphen, to treat our members, staff, mutual slash homeowners associations, suppliers and neighbors with res respect and integrity, to support our mutual slash homeowners associations, and to be responsive to the cha changing needs of our residents and to the world around us. So moved. So I think there shouldn't be an and though at the first, after the first bullet. No, there's take the, that and number out. two bullet. Okay, and now you've had a chance, Dale, to th your last opportunity to make a suggestion. You were going to think about uh, the world. Is that? Are you satisfied? With no, that? I'm, I'm very satisfied with it. And actually, I really think the powerful word in that last one is responsive. Okay, I really like that. Okay, so uh, we have a motion. As Sue, uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. In the last words on this topic. Forever hold your peace. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. That was one of the harder jobs. Okay. Job, <laughs> Very well done. Thank you. Okay. So now we have just some announcements. If I can find my sheet. Here we go. Uh, no new business, I don't think. Any new business? No. Okay, the next mid-month regular meeting of the board will be held on Tuesday, September 10th, 9 a.m. in the Fireside Room at the Gateway Complex. The board will meet with the Finance Committee to hear the presentation of the proposed GRF operations budget. That is our coupon, so anyone who's interested in weighing in on that should attend that meeting. The next end-of-the-month regular meeting of the board will be held on Thursday, September 26th at 9 a.m. here in Peacock Hall. We are recessed to an executive session now. Thank you.